Good morning, faculty, students, and robot aficionados from all over. It is Saturday, January 22nd, and you know what that means. It's time for the 2022 Autonomous Snowplow Challenge. Live from Dunwoody College of Technology out of beautiful downtown Minneapolis. The purpose of the Autonomous Snowplow Competition is to challenge university and college students, as well as the general public, to design, build, and operate a fully autonomous snowplow to remove snow from a designated path. The teams will be scored based on the amount of snow removed, the amount of time taken to complete the course, and their ability to avoid obstacles. Teams from the upper Midwest and Canada have competed in this event since 2011. This is a staple of Dunwoody, I've been to a couple times, and uh, we're very excited to have the snowball competition back for 2022. We'd like to thank our sponsors for helping make this event possible. All of our event bags and stocking caps you see competitors wearing were sponsored by SICK Intelligent Sensors. Many of the vehicles today uh, utilize SICK sensors. The Single Eye Competition Award was sponsored by Toro and Boss Snowplows. The Collaborative Competition Award is being sponsored by Delcor Systems. And the rest of the uh, few more of our sponsors include Air Automation Engineering, Astro Labs, the Institute of Navigation, Banner Engineering, FANUC Robotics, the International Society for Automation, and Western Snowplows. Some of the plows you'll see computing here today include the Snow Devil from Dunwoody Technical College and its uh, sister plow, the Wendigo. You'll also see Bad Max from Lake Area Technical College, as well as their other uh, plow, Team Torque. Snow Problem uh, from Minnesota State Mankato. And Yeti from the University of Michigan Dearborn. Those are just to name a few of the plows you'll be seeing here compete today in the different competitions. And it looks like we're still getting ready to go here. So 
Stay tuned for some snowplow action.
All right, folks, I just got a word from the higher ups that our first snowplow, Bad Max, will be competing at 8.30. There's a slight delay just with getting this field set up. It is a, uh, it's a cold morning here in Minnesota, about 8 degrees, um, or as we call it, starting to get chilly. We will uh, be back. We'll, we'll start as soon as they're ready to go, but the, the estimated time right now is about 8.30, and that will be Bad Max from Lake Area Technical College. Lake Area, like I said earlier, is sponsoring two uh, plows this year, which will be the Team Torque and the Bad Max. The Bad Max is designed for this year as brand new from the ground up, uh, built in about three weeks, which is pretty impressive. And uh, fun fact for you, two fire departments were called during the build of the Bad Max. So hopefully none today. That would be appreciated. And they will be coming up shortly, give or take about 15 minutes. As you can see right now, they are loading snow up onto the field for the plows to clear. They'll have to avoid obstacles as well as clear the snow. So it's not just a straight line shot. You actually have to maneuver and you have to, uh, along the way of removing all the snow.
Folks, if you're just joining us, today is the Autonomous Snowplow Competition, hosted here live at Dunwoody College of Technology from downtown Minneapolis. Uh, the purpose of the Autonomous Snowplow Competition is to challenge university and college students, as well as the general public, to design, build, and operate a fully autonomous snowplow to remove snow from a designated path. Teams will be scored based on the amount of snow removed, the amount of time taken to complete the course, and their ability to avoid obstacles. Teams from the upper Midwest and Canada have competed in this event since 2011. And in about hopefully 10 minutes here, we'll be seeing our first competitor, Bad Max, from Lake Area Technical College. And folks, if you can see off to the side of your screen, we can see Bad Max being loaded onto the course, getting ready to start its, uh, its trial run here. A little information about Lake Area Technical College. Established in 1965 in Watertown, South Dakota, it hosts 2,600 2, plus students uh, in 30 different programs. LATI has a 90% placement rate. The LATI Robotics and Electronics Program was a recipient of the 2019 ATEA Outstanding Program of the Year Award. So, quality college, and we're excited to. Have them here at Dunwoody. We see the team standing behind Bed Max. They include a welder, a machinist, an engineer, a programmer, and an electrician. A multi talented group of people. Bed Max seems to be moving quite well, regardless of the cold weather, the cold wind, the uh, probably icy parking lot. And here they are posing for a picture, as you can see. Isn't that nice? It's always fun to see the people take pride in their snow plows. This is a fun competition, and uh, definitely these people have earned the right to be proud of themselves.
All right, folks, if you didn't hear that walkie-talkie come on in, we just got word that in about five minutes, Bad Max will be starting his run. And we are all very excited to get the 2022 Autonomous Snowplow Competition off and running. We wish the best of success for Bad Max and hope that unlike when it was built, the fire department will not be called. And as you can see, they're placing the snow onto the field. Oh, I was wondering what that sound was. That was the uh, the loudspeaker. They're getting ready to kick off Bad Max's run. Now remember, plows are scored not just on clearing the snow, but their ability to operate and move through the path while avoiding obstacles. Not just a straight line shot where you clear everything off. You have to avoid some things. Folks of action movies should recognize the reference for the Bad Max robot from Mad Max. Fury Road being one of my favorite movies of all time. I saw it in theaters, I believe, four or five times. So the reference is definitely uh, one that hits home for me. I, 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 I'm rooting for Bad Max to have a successful run here. And we see some more uh, snow being delivered to fill out the rest of the squares. We should be able to get started here in about three minutes, maybe even less. Who knows? These folks are working very hard and very quick. We appreciate all their efforts, and especially on a cold day like this, especially when I'm sitting inside in a nice heated room. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they're loading up two courses to speed up time between the, the different runs. Uh, so you can see uh, closer to the uh, other side of the screen, you can see them starting to load up the other course. They've placed the obstacle and they're preparing that one for the run after Bad Max's first run here uh, on the other side of the screen.
All right. I believe Bad Max is about ready to start its run. They're moving the wood planks to allow Bad Max the freedom to get through the snow without knocking over the obstacle, of course. And we are just mere moments away from kicking off the 2022 Autonomous Snowplow Competition. And as we're about to kick off, we'd once again like to thank our sponsors, including Sick Intelligent Sensors, Toro, Boss Snowplows, uh, Delcor Systems, Air Automation Engineering, Astro Labs, the Institute of Navigation, Banner Engineering, FANUC Robotics, the International Society for Automation, and Western Snowplows. Thank you all for sponsoring this awesome event, which hopefully will make a plow great enough so I don't have to shovel my driveway anymore. I would appreciate it. <clears throat> Seems like they're just cleaning off the edges of the snow to make sure there's no uh, excess in case the plow senses it or, or uh, you know, just make it look nice. Bad Max's uh, shiny and chrome design is a brand new design. And I think it should not be lost on everyone that this robot was built in three weeks. Uh, From the ground up, brand new, from the ground up, three weeks it took. And it's already getting ready for a competition here. That is amazing uh, by every stretch of the imagination. Especially someone like me who does not design robots. That That is impressive. (laughs) We should be getting started any moment now. Anybody watching here have anybody uh, featured in the competition today? If you do, feel free to chat in the uh, the, the live chat. Throw throw a message in the live chat if you're uh, supporting any of your uh, your family, your friends, partners, casual work acquaintances, work partners. I don't know. But if you know somebody's here tonight or today? Uh, throw it in the chat if you want. Show them some love. Now, I will say, making these courses should be 
hopefully easier than the last uh, autonomous robot, snow, uh, autonomous snowplow competition I went to. Uh, that day was incredibly windy. Uh, I can't imagine making the snow uh, even was an easy task. Um, we have a little bit of wind here today, but it's mainly just cold because we live in Minnesota. So it's just it's just going to be cold. All right, just got a call in. We're about five minutes from uh, from go time. Just about there. And we want to thank you for being patient. We want to thank you for tuning in to the 2022 Autonomous Snowplow Competition. This is a, a fun event. This is a very educational event. And uh, I've had the, uh, the pleasure of, I believe, seeing one or two of them in person. Um, I still carry my snowplow button with pride on my jacket. Um, and uh, we want to thank Dunwoody Technical College for uh, College of Technology. I apologize there uh, for hosting the event. And uh, yeah, we are very excited to have this competition back. All right, and once again, we are getting ready to see Bad Max from Lake Area Technical College. Bad Max is here with uh, another snowplow from LATI. That would be Team Torque. Bad Max is a new design, though, from the ground up. It was built in three weeks by a team of a welder, a machinist, an engineer, programmer, and an electrician. A multifaceted team, which is why it only was, the fire department was only called twice during the construction of the robots. If I was trying to build it, uh, the fire department would have been called many more times and my house would be no more. And of course, the Bad Max name is comes from the film series Mad Max, uh, which might explain the shiny and chrome design. Let's see if they make their way to Valhalla. Let's all witness Bad Max's first run in about in mere moments.
Let's plow and Bad Max is off to the races. All right, it's cleared a little bit, and here we go for a turn. All right, and... Kind of come back to where the original starting position at the garage and let's see what the plan is here with the bad max team from lati all right it seems like their run may be over at least temporarily now we'll see if they uh, are restarting their run or if they will continue All right, I believe we're going for a restart here for Bad Max. They'll be given another shot at the plowing. Mark, Mark. Bad Max is going to take a restart, 10%. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just got confirmation from the higher ups that yes, Bad Max will be taking a restart. So we will see them start up again here shortly. I hear the countdown three, two, and one. Let's plow, folks. And Bad Max seems to be clearing far more of the snow now. Oh, but it knocked over the obstacle. Incredibly unfortunate. It was making great efforts to clear the snow. But unfortunately, it seems as though that will dock them. All right, if you can see off to the other side of the screen here, we'll shift our camera over. We have another plow getting set up, ready to go. Uh, from this point of view, I cannot tell which plow it is. <clears throat> the maroon colors suggest maybe Dunwoody, but we will find out shortly which plow that is.
And as we wait, we're waiting to get a word in on point scoring for the Bad Max and a name on this new this new combatant to enter the snowplow arena and what school they represent. So remember, in the autonomous snowplow competition, vehicles are scored on how much snow they remove, the amount of time it took, and their ability to avoid obstacles, which is why it's such a heartbreaker that Bad Max had to crush the obstacle in their course. Um, not unlike the crashing of uh, War Boys cars and Mad Max Fury Road. Um, we witnessed it, and uh, unfortunately that should dock them some points. But we will see what the official word is. And we will see what the official name of this other plow is shortly. It's kind of funny because I can hear the people talking, the loudspeaker outside, but it just kind of sounds like it's an adult from the Peanuts cartoon. But every once in a while, I'll catch a, I'll catch a, I'll catch a real word in there. But the rest of the time, it's bop, 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 bop. But uh, I'm sure they're doing a great job communicating with all the teams, making sure uh, that they're all informed. So we're getting ready for this plow to take off here, and we will get the name on this plow shortly, uh, as well as an update, hopefully on. Bad Max. All right, folks, we're still waiting on the scoring for Bad Max, but we do now know that we were correct in assuming that this is... Apologies for the interruption, but our assumptions were correct. That is a Dunwoody plow taking the south field right now. That is the Dunwoody Snow Devil. The Dunway Snow Devil is a complete redesign and build for this year. Uh, the Snow Devil chassis is the same as the Dunwoody Wendigo and Washuge. Uh, the Snow Devil gets its name for the first robotic snowplow built at Dunwoody in 2011. So a bit of history behind the name. The team is made up of students from Dunwoody's robot robotics and welding programs, uh, which is a fine program. I have personal experience with many of them. Uh, more than uh, these silly folks, more than 200 slices of pizza were consumed by the team since they started to build in September of 2021. The Snow Devil utilized a magnetic sensor and magnetic strips to track its location along the edges of the snow's path. Uh, and the turns are triggered by the reverse polarity of the magnetic strips. So, quite fancy techniques here being done by the uh, snow devil a little information on dunwoody uh, it was founded in 1914 by kate and william dunwoody educate it's educated more than 250,000 men and women in its 100 year history for the academic year of 2020 to 2021 there are 1510 students enrolled with 150 faculty members which i am very proud to say I have, uh, I'm a workshop instructor here at Dunwoody, so I like to take some pride in saying that I've worked with Dunwoody for a couple years now. So not to create bias, but I do enjoy this college and uh, wishing the best.
like I wish the best for all the snow plows in this competition for the Dunwoody Snow Devil. And you can see off to the other side of the screen here, this the uh, Bad Max leaving the field, and we will be getting their scores shortly. But for now, we are preparing the launch of the, I apologize, we are preparing for the launch of the Dunwoody Snow Devil, one of three Dunwoody plows competing this year, including the Windigo and the Washuge. That fact about the pizza consumed uh, hits home with me. I feel kindred spirits with the snow devil, for I too am also completely fueled off of pizza. Uh, so I am I'm looking forward to seeing how the snow devil progresses, or if it ends up like me, which usually just ends up crashing on the couch. Hopefully the snow devil has a bit better luck than that. And we now have the placement of the obstacles happening on the course, as well as a couple of pictures being taken of the team with their with their plow. And we hope that the snow devil is able to navigate cleanly and remove the snow promptly. And everybody has just a, a fun time doing it. All right, they are measuring out just a little bit here to get ready for the snow devils. 
first run. And we can see on the other side of the field, we have them repacking the field that was previously competed on by Bad Max from Lake Area Technical College Institute. Need to get my names right. Lake Area Technical College. I was right. Ha! Take that brain. Second guess me. And we will see who will be competing there shortly. But right now, we are still preparing for the launch of the Dunwoody Snow Devil. As you can see, the banner possibly down in the middle of the... Uh, I'm hearing voices. Not in a worrisome way, in a way that I hear they might be getting ready to launch the next run. It seems like they're still game prepped here. But if you can see down in the middle, you have a This Is Sick banner, Left Hand Robotics banner, a Honeywell banner. As you, maybe you can see there's a Toro, kind of blocked by a speaker. Lots of uh, wonderful sponsors here today. <clears throat> Some, Some other sponsors include... Toro and Boss Snowplows, the aforementioned SICK intelligent sensors, which many of the vehicles are using today. Uh, Delcor Systems, Air Automation Engineering, Astro Labs, the Institute of Navigation, Banner Engineering, FANUC Robotics, the International Society for Automation, and Western Snowplows. We thank each and every one of you for sponsoring this amazing event. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. And we thank everyone helping today, braving the cold, uh, this this uh, event would not be possible in the least without any of you. Um, all these uh, kind folks out here in, uh, I believe, eight degree weather on this chilly Minnesota morning. Uh, they're the they're the real heroes, folks. And I hope they're all staying as warm as possible. Hopefully they have many hand warmers, boot warmers. Actually, the boot warmers never work. I just dropped the hand warmers in my boots. Uh, <laughs> If you could hear the walkie-talkie cutting in right there, that was the higher-ups announcing that, yes, in fact, the Snow Devil is about ready to launch. Now, for this one, there are two obstacles. You have to avoid the one on the inside of the track, the uh, the yellow cone, if you can see um, the color uh, well enough, and then the, the obstacle on the outside of the snow path. So that's when you're maneuvering to push the, the snow out of the way. You can't clip that neon green pole on the outside of the field. Um, so both obstacles must be avoided for this event. Uh, let's hope that the Snow Devil can clear it. Looking forward to see Snow Devil uh, compete, uh, given especially the fact that this is a complete redesign of the Snow Devil, uh, named after the original snowplow. Uh, oh Apologies for the interruption. Uh, 
The snow devil is named after the first snowplow from the robotics part department of Dunwoody in 2011. But this is a complete redesign of the plow. Hopefully the, there will be no issues with a uh, new design, a uh, new build for this year. Oh. I'm hearing words spoken, but I can't understand any of it. I'm assuming we're gearing up for the Snow Devils' first run. And we have Noah zero nine. What time does the snow get devil go, uh, buddy? Like like a couple like mere moments. It's about to go. Snow devil is getting ready. Snow devil is on the field and ready to go. Up oh, there said, Are you ready to go? Here goes a snow devil. Three, two, one, let's plow. The snow devil taking a methodical approach. which can be beneficial to not veer off course and knock into any obstacles. All right, we're moving forward here. We're moving forward. And we're about to come up to the obstacle. Hopefully, we can stop. Oh, it's clipping into the obstacle and pushing it forward. Some people are clapping. I don't know if that's the proper response to have. And the obstacle goes down. By God, as, as my witness, it is broken in half. The plow is coming up to the end of the line. And now is going to turn and return to garage. A great turn by the snow devil. See fist bumps being handed out, a couple of applause here and there. These folks are happy with that turn. As Snow Devil returns to garage, 
we can talk about those magnetic sensors. How the uh, the sort of operates is it utilizes magnetic sensors and magnetic strips to track its location along edges of the snow path, and the turns are triggered by reverse polarity of those magnetic strips. And uh, clearly that worked out as the beautiful turn executed by the snow devil, uh, near pitch perfect, as it now returns back to its starting point. And we want to congratulate the snow devil for a successful return to garage. I believe that completes its run. And outside of the uh, the the uh, the desolate. Oh, So yeah, for knocking down the obstacle, there will be a, a 10 10% uh, um, penalty. But overall, you can't be mad about that that path that uh, the Snow Devil took. Uh, clean turn, a lot of snow removed, and uh, the the Snow Devil team should be quite proud of themselves for a successful run, a successful return to garage, as well. Now some measurements will be done to determine how many points the Snow Devil will get. We will get those updated shortly. But um, I feel like they need theme music almost. Dun, 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 dun. We have a new competitor entering the battlefield. We'll get a name on this shortly. But they'll be ready to uh, take their run very soon here as the Snow Devil finishes up its... Uh, post run uh, actions and the measurements are taken Once again, we'd like to congratulate the members of the Snow Devil team, uh, numerous uh, students from the robotics and welding programs that make up the over 1,500 students that are enrolled in Dunwoody College of Technology uh, for an excellent job on the Snow Devil. And we will be seeing the uh, the partner uh, plows of the uh, Snow Devil, the uh, the fellow uh, co-students of Dunwoody College, uh, the Wendigo and the Washuge, which include the same chassis that you see on the Snow Devil.
All right, folks, we're going to take it on over to the north side of the field because the Chase Western Reserve University Otto has entered the fight. Chase Western is a private research university in Cleveland, Ohio. Case, I have been saying it wrong. It's all good. Case Western Reserve was established in 1967 when Western Reserve University founded when Western Reserve University founded in 1826 and named for its location in Connecticut Western Reserve and Case Institute of Technology founded in 1880 through the endowment of Leonard Case Jr. formerly federated. The auto navigates using a combination of LIDAR, cameras, and DECAWAVE systems. Just a little personal information on the auto. The auto spends its summers these days as an autonomous pasture management robot for a research project called Greener Pastures. So we will see it competing quite shortly as the snow devil gets uh, its field replaced. And the auto already obviously has its field set up and ready to go. So we will get to them shortly. So I believe right now our host is communicating the notes about the auto to the crowd. Make sure everyone knows everything about this upcoming challenger. And actually, fun fact, the auto used to be two different snowplow robots. Uh, the chassis of the former Snow Joke and the sensor package of the previous version of the auto are now one and the same. They've been combined to create some sort of a super plow meaning that we're probably going to get some impressive work done by this uh, Case Western snowplow. As you can see on the side of the screen, the snow devil is now leaving the field and the uh, the amazing workers are clearing the path, getting ready for our next uh, run following the autos run. And we will find out who uh, who is up next, I'm sure, very shortly. But for now, we're getting ready for autos run uh, their first run of the day. Uh, one more uh, fun fact, um, given our, our mention of the fuel used uh, and consumed by the team that made the Snow Devil being 
about 200 slices of pizza. Uh, since arriving in Minnesota, the team uh, behind Otto has destroyed a three-pound bag of gummy bears. Just working on Otto. Um, of course, collectively, not all on one team member. Uh, you would be more gummy bear than person at that point. Uh, so it's good to find out what these people are using to fuel themselves towards innovation, towards uh, the snowplow competition. We have gummy bears, we have pizza. I can only imagine what else was used to fuel uh, these bright teens. If I'm not mistaken, I believe we are going to allow the, the workers to fill out the other field so that they can all watch Otto take its run. So once they are ready to go, we will be ready to launch for Otto. For those of you just joining us, maybe joining us in the middle of maybe the, the Snow Devils run, this is the 2022 Autonomous Snowplow Competition hosted this year by Dunwoody College of Technology in beautiful downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota. The purpose of the Autonomous Snowplow Competition is to challenge university and college students as well as the general public to design, build, and operate a fully autonomous snowplow to remove snow from a designated path. The teams will be scored based upon the amount of snow removed, the amount of time taken to compete, complete the course, and their ability to avoid obstacles. Teams from Upper Midwest, from the Upper Midwest and Canada, have competed in this event since 2011. Now, that obstacle point is very important, as the last two plows have both decimated the obstacles. Sorry for the interruption. We were just being reminded that the auto will be taking the north field very shortly. But yeah, both the uh, Snow Devil and the uh, LATC uh, Bad Max decimated the obstacles like the Buffalo Bills decimated the New England Patriots. Um, so that is obviously a note we have to make that the obstacles will come into play. If they take the obstacles out, they will be deducted points. Although the Snow Devil was able to complete its full run and return to garage successfully, the Bad Max uh, a little less so, but still was able to clear a large portion of the snow. So we'll see what those points look like once we get the, uh, the points all tallied. But in a few short moments, we will have 
the Case Western Reserve University Otto hitting up its run today on the north side of the field. And celebrations are made as the south side of the field is nearing completion, which means we are mere moments away from the Case Western Auto making its run, trying to avoid both obstacles on the inside of the track and on the outside, ensuring that when you make that turn to return to garage or to clear more snow, you do not take out the outside obstacle as well as maneuvering around the inside obstacle. So far, someone's car is beeping but that's all good it is what it is um uh so far none of our plows have been able to dodge the inside track obstacle um so we'll see if the auto will be able to maneuver around with its lidar system the cameras and its deco wave system I believe we're getting ready to start here. There's ready. Four, three, two, one. Let's plow. And the auto goes head for it, and it destroys the obstacle. Just absolutely decimates it. But in no time at all, clearing a large chunk of snow, now it's making its turn. Sorry, making a, making, now it's making its turn, but it cleared plenty of snow in its way to absolutely obliterating the obstacle. That inner track obstacle seems to be giving the plows the most issues today. But what one can say is the auto did remove a lot of snow. Now, as long as it can return to garage, I believe we should be. Unless I believe, are they taking another run? Are they going to. We'll wait for a, a bit of a word on what's going on with the auto. Like I said, large amount of snow cleared, but absolute. Oh, nope. We have people on the field. I believe that either means we're going to restart or we are going to, or that'll be the run for the auto. And, uh, and as we wait to see what happens, uh, uh, more theme music. Dun, 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 dun. We have a new competitor entering the field. I'm not sure what they have. Phillips and Temro on their snow problem. This is the snow problem. I believe their school is, if I may have a brief uh, moment of your time. No problem. It's from Minnesota State Mankato. They'll be preparing to take the field uh, in a short amount of time on the south side. As the auto is now measured for its um, completion, I believe that'll end the run for the auto. Uh, once again, the 
inner uh, the inner track obstacle proving to be an issue for our plows, not being able to navigate around it, and would rather RKO it out of nowhere and absolutely obliterate it. Uh, will the snow problem uh, find no problem with the inner obstacle? Only time will tell. But right now we have we'd like to thank Case uh, Westerns Auto for participating and uh, congratulate them on an excellent amount of snow cleared. Uh, during their run. Yes, indeed, we have the Minnesota State Mankato's snow problem. And uh, I don't know if you can see, uh, but uh, quite a lot of lights on the inside of the snow problem. A nice purple. Purple being one of my two favorite colors. They've already won my heart over. A little information on Minnesota State University, Mankato, previously known as Mankato State, was established in 1858 and currently serves more than 15,000 students. Notable alumni include Minnesota Governor Tim Walls and Minnesota Vikings own Adam Thielen. And we love our Minnesota boy, Adam Thielen. Snow Problem was, mechanically, was a mechanical engineering senior design project by the school. Uh, GPS data is used for its navigation. Will that prove effective compared to the LIDAR or the magnetic strips used by the other plows? We'll, we'll wait and see. The estimated total cost of the vehicle was $3,000. Uh, and Snow Problem competed in the virtual competition in 2021, but this is their first in-person competition. Snow Problem will be collaborating with Dunwoody's Washuge in the Triple I competition. If you're just joining us, we just had Case Western's auto go for its run, and we are now preparing the launch of Minnesota State Mankato's Snow Problem, which should be launching shortly.
And we see the obstacles getting placed on the track. The obstacles proving to be a problem for all plows that have come so far. But will the snow problem be much like its alumni, Minnesota Vikings, Adam Thielen, and be elusive and dodge the obstacles? We've got snow problem still waiting in the wings. Uh, I believe if we're going off the last couple of rounds, we are going to have the other field finished off and, and prepared for the next run before we launch with snow problem. So now's the time to thank our sponsors again, because why, why wouldn't we stop thanking them? They're all incredibly wonderful, and we thank all of them for helping us make this event possible. The event bags and stocking caps you see competitors wear uh, were sponsored by SICK Intelligence Sensors, and many of the vehicles today will be using SICK Sensors. Um, the Single Eye Competition Award is being sponsored by Toro and Boss Snowplows. The Collaborative Competition Award is being sponsored by Delcor Systems, and other sponsors include Air Automation Engineering, Astro Labs, the Institute of Navigation, Banner Engineering, FANUC Robotics, the International Society for Automation, and Western Snowplows. We thank all of you. This event does not go on without your kind contributions. And we also like to thank all of our workers who set the stages, who showed up early, are loading snow, uh, driving the, the, uh, the bulldozers, um, officiating, hosting our, our wonderful judges. We'd like to thank all of the people who participated in this event for making it possible. Uh, this doesn't happen without you, um, especially on such a cold day like this, um, but for such a great event like the Autonomous Snowplow Competition.
So we have Josh Kirk uh, cheering for Snow Problem, rooting for for his team. Uh, and we have Comic Sam's, love the name. Uh, he's asking, who is the reigning champion? The reigning champion is actually not here today. It is the University of Minnesota. Unfortunately, they were unable to attend due to COVID protocols. But uh, we look forward to having them back next year uh, to defend their their title. So whoever wins, I'm sure would love to face them next, next year. All right, we got Snow Problem getting ready to go here. One, let's plow. Oh. No Problem seems to be stalled a little bit here. Let's see if they're ready to go. Oh, and here it goes. And seem to be employing some sort of oh, we might be looking at a restart here folks sure it's just a simple error and they will be restarting in no time We have no problem. Seems to be having a slight technical difficulty. We'll see if we can get them back. Hey, Comic Sam's, your grandfather was a snowplow? Dang, dude. That's crazy. All right, I believe the snow problem will be incurring both a boundary zone uh, penalty and a restart penalty. Yeah, unfortunately, the snow problem seems to have hit the boundary once again. Uh, seem to be having a little bit of issues here. Hopefully, they can get a run in here to finish off at least the rest of the course. But we'll have to wait and see. Very unfortunate. Uh, who knows what the issue are? Issues are. 
Um, could be the cold weather, could be uh, got bumped around in transit. Hopefully they're able to finish the course and uh, at least get some, some plowing in here. But that remains to be seen. Quite unfortunate for this bright team uh, and this uh, very impressive looking snowplow. So we will get a word in here. They will incur two boundary penalties as well as a restart penalty if they continue onwards, uh, which would mean they would need quite the impressive run to garner enough points. Um, but just looking at the sheer uh, visual of the snow problem, I would say these this team should be definitely proud of itself uh, for creating such an impressive looking machine. I'm sure. Oh, and we have it going again. It is made its way. It has now hit the boundary once again. Uh, and I believe that is number three. And they will open the hood once again to give it a little bit of an inspection. But that is three boundary penalties. And we will see what the... the uh, we will... Uh, yep. Uh, let's get uh, hit F for to pay respects for Snow Problems Run. Unfortunately, it does look like, in fact, uh, they will be taking three penalties here. F's in the chat, folks. Uh, but all love and respect to Snow Problem. All love and respect to Man Minnesota State Mankato. They, uh, like I said, built a very impressive looking plow. And we can only hope that they can come back, uh, whether it be in this run or next year, with a uh, an impressive run going forward. It's just, it, you, you hate to see it, unfortunately. There is, just seems to be something, something not working today. Again, whether it be the, the traction, whether it be the cold, it is it is Minnesota. Uh, it's it's always cold enough to destroy a 97 Honda Accord here during the winter. So snow plows are no different from uh, other types of machines. Cold does affect them, and the transit affects them. So we will see what ends up happening with snow problem. But I do believe um, they might try to negotiate a restart but they also might call it similar to Bad Max and their run uh, for um, our first plow of the morning. Um, we see them now. They are pulling, I believe, Snow Problem, getting it into a new position. They're trying to, I believe, they are trying to straighten it out. So I do believe we are going to get another run from Snow Problem. Um, oh, unfortunately, they are facing it away from the track. Maybe not. They're opening the hood once again to inspect it. To... If you heard the higher ups right there, sounds good. If you heard the higher ups right there, we are going to get another run from Snow Problem. So let's get a little. Yep, the powers that be have deemed it so. The Snow Problem will get another shot. Um, let's get a little bit. Where are my believers at? I agree, Comic Sans. Let's get a little bit of hype for Snow Problem. We're going to try to see them get one more run out of this, see if they can clear a path. Hey, if they can clear a good path, who knows how many points they're going to get. We have seen no plow uh, complete the course without completely RKOing out of nowhere and obliterating the obstacles. So no plow has gone through this unscathed. Uh, so for snow problem, if they get a good score, who knows? If they if they can dodge that inner obstacle and complete the snow uh, in a in a decent amount of time, who knows what kind of a score they're going to get? Clear that path, Josh says. I agree. Clear that path. Mm -hmm. 
we so far have yeah yeah randy orton sorry i had to make the reference i apologize <laughs> um we so far have seen every plow go so far decimate the obstacle like the buffalo bills decimated the new england patriots if no problem can complete this path without hitting the obstacles there is a very good chance they could get some points here i'm seeing a judge wave his hands in a circular motion that might mean they will do the restart but right now they are continuing to check under the hood so we will see what the idea is once again, the snow problem. The snow problem is using GPS as a software, um, different from the uh, the uh, the previous plows that use such things as lidar detection, magnetic strips, um, and so forth. Um, could the GPS navigation be the issue with uh, with snow problem? Um, who knows? Uh, it looks like they are closing up the hood. They are lifting up the plow end. And we could be seeing the restart here. I have it set in position at the garage. All right, I see some movement from Snow Problem. It's moving forward. Let's plow. Clear that path. And it it slammed into the boundary once again. Uh, it, it looks like that will be another penalty, unfortunately. You hate to see it, folks. But it does look like Snow Problem might not be destined for this year's competition as it has collided with the boundary yet again. We, we tried, we, people of Earth didn't lend it enough spirit energy and it collided with the boundary once again. But once again, we would like to take time to say Minnesota State Mankato, their team created an impressive plow uh, that cost over about $3,000 to build um it competed in the virtual competitions in 2021 so we know this plow can go this is not its first rodeo uh to say the least um and it will be collaborating with dunwoody's with Shuge in the triple i competition so hopefully it'll have a bit of a chance to redeem itself uh in the triple i and it was developed by uh it was a project for the mechanical engineering senior design program so we'd like to thank Minnesota State Mankato for bringing Snow Problem here, and we wish them uh, the best in the future runs, whether it be today or in the future. And folks, if you're joining us today, right now, just in from wherever you're watching this from we appreciate you tuning in this is the 2022 autonomous snowplow competition hosted live at dunwoody college of technology in beautiful downtown minneapolis it is a brisk morning uh january 22nd we've already seen bad max compete uh from lake area technical college and we've seen uh dunwoody's snow devil We've seen Case Western's auto, and we are just completing up the run for Minnesota State Mankato's snow problem. Uh, just a quick reminder on the purpose of the event. The purpose of the autonomous snowfall competition is to challenge university and college students, as well as the general public, to design, build, and operate a fully autonomous snowplow to remove snow from a designated path. Teams will be scored based upon the amount of snow removed, the amount of time taken to complete the course, and their ability to avoid obstacles. Teams from the upper Midwest and Canada have competed in this event since 2011, over a decade of positivity, of innovation, 
and of just plain old good time for this event. Um, we're seeing some pictures taken, some judges viewing over here. And reminder on that obstacles uh, a point in the rules, none of the plows so far have avoided hitting the obstacles. Um, none of the plows that have completed the course, that is. Oh, snow problems off to the races. It's cleared a bunch. It's it's going. It's going. It's no problem. Just cleared a bunch. Oh, but I believe that is the end of its run. It's over with. But it was able to clear some snow. It was able to, yeah, come back from the from seemingly a, a, a depressive state to actually clear some snow off the path. And um Mark Mullet, that completes the Minnesota All right, folks, that does wrap it up for Minnesota State Mankato Snow Problem. Able to clear uh, a chunk of the track after a few incurring a few penalties, whether it be boundary or restarts. But we congratulate them on attending the event and look forward to seeing what Snow Problem has for the future, including its collaborative efforts with Dunwoody's Washuge for the Triple I competition. But right now on the north side of the field, we have NDSU's Bison uh, getting ready to take the field. And that is affectionately known as Frosty the Snowplow getting ready to take the field. Um, while they get ready to take the field, we will have more information about NDSU and Frosty the Snowplow. Uh, I am going to leave for about five minutes to get a snack. I will be right back.
All right, folks, I am back just in time. We're getting ready to see NDSU's Frosty, the snowplow, take its run. NDSU fan club is here. Right on, right on. <clears throat> a couple of my closest friends graduate from NDSU. I know it's a great, great school. did I miss here? Just go NDSU. A lot of people here for NDSU. I love to see it. I love to see the support. Frosty Snowplow. Here's some fun facts about Frosty Snowplow. The NDSU robot was has the nickname High Flex, representing the High Flex learning used during the recent COVID spikes. The team is made up of a, mecha a mechanical, electrical, and computer engineering students. The team accidentally lit their shop on fire during the build. Dang. So this frost, this snowplow has been forged in fire. It is ready to go. Frosty, no, the frosty, the snowplow utilizes a unique articulated steering system and articulation snowplow blade. It also uses a web interface for status and control. Another unique method of navigation uh we've seen uh lidar we've seen uh deca wave we've seen uh gps navigation so we've seen a multitude of ways for uh, that these plows roll and i believe it's about to get started ndsu frosty snowplow ready to go let me get a let's get a let's 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 get a let's plow in five, four, three, oh, yeah. two, oh, yeah. one. Yeah. Let's plow. A slow start from Frost to the snowplow. Um, seems a bit of a stall here for Frost, Frosty. Um, hopefully we can kick up into high gear and clear this path. But so far, no movement. It needs your spirit energy. NDSU fan club. Lend Frosty the snowplow. Your spirit energy. Let's get some hype for Frosty. Give it some coffee. I agree. I That's what I did when I was taking a break between these two runs. I need to get some coffee. Your MC today is sponsored by Coffee and Banana Bread. Coffee and Banana Bread. It's delicious. Um, but it seems like Frosty needs a bit of a kickstart. It does need a top hat. Make it come to life. Does anybody have access to carrots, charcoal, or a top hat? We can get this thing to come to life. I'd say give it a monster energy drink, but that would probably strip the paint right off of it. 
So let's stick with coffee. Anybody got some coffee? Can't have mine. I need my coffee. But we are still seeing a stall here from Frosty, unfortunately. I'm going to communicate with the higher ups. Corn, corn cob pipe. It needs a corn cob pipe. Needs some sticks for his arms. And eventually, he'll just start singing songs for us. It'll be amazing. Let me communicate with the higher ups and see what the status is on Frosty. There it goes, there it goes, Frosty. And it successfully misses the obstacle. It is the first plow today to miss the obstacle and not totally obliterate it. So congratulations to Frosty the Snowplow. Let's see if it can get anything else done or if that will be its run. But after a little, a brief communication issue, they gave it some coffee. They gave it the top hat. They gave it the corn, corn cob pipe. They gave it the carrot nose. And Frosty, Frosty the Snowplow launched into the snow and avoided the obstacles. Yeah, just given the, uh, the factors of communication between the wireless systems, it's always hard to tell when things go and when they don't. But Frosty did, in fact, come to life sing us a show tune and clear some of that snow will it continue that is uh the question we all have right now we are on the edge of our seats trying to figure that out until i see feet hit the the field i assume we are still live and going um but frosty the snowplow did in fact launch a barrage with its articulated blade and clear a large portion of the snow without obliterating the obstacles. A button nose. I missed that. A button nose. That was the final piece. NDS, you should be very proud. The team should be very proud of their plow, even if this was the stopping point. Because I do believe this is the most snow cleared without hitting. Well, first of all, didn't hit the obstacles. Crazy. I know. None of the things so far have missed the obstacles. But I believe this beat out the clearing done by uh, the Snow Devil from Dunwoody. So I could be wrong on that. But I do believe NDSU cleared more snow than the Snow Devil. And it did it without taking out the, um, the obstacles. So congratulations to the NDSU team on that, even if they don't get a restart and move any further. We believe, I, 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 I know you believe, and your belief brought him to life. You brought Frosty to life. Hmm. So we'll give him a few seconds here to see what the plan is. And I believe that'll wrap it up for Frosty the Snowplow, unless I'm mistaken. But it does, in fact, seem like it is leaving the field. But a very, very successful run from Frosty the Snowplow. From my memory, from my estimation, probably the cleanest and most removed of today's plows. Oh, 
it is is it re-entering the field? I see its operator going onto the field, so that might mean that we are done with this run, but let's give it a few more seconds to be double sure. And it is leaving the field. That is the end of the run for Frosty the snowplow. But what a successful run from NDSU snowplow. They should all be incredibly proud of themselves. And the competition should all be incredibly concerned whether they can beat that amount of snowplowing without taking out the obstacles. So, so far, that has been... The, uh, the issue, the Achilles heel of the snowplow this morning. But I do see... Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. We have Dunwoody's Wendigo snowplow preparing for launch on the southern side of the field. So as they clear up the field uh, for from the... Uh, uh, the Frost is snowplows run. We will get Wendigo, the pride of Dunwoody, one of the pride uh, snowplows of Dunwoody College of Technology, um, ready to take its run of the day. Brief little uh, factoids about NDSU very briefly before we completely wrap up with Frosty's section. North Dakota State University of Agriculture and Applied Sciences, more commonly known as North Dakota State University, is a public land-grant research university in Fargo, North Dakota. It was founded as North Dakota Agricultural College in 1890 as the state's land-grant university. And once again, we'd like to thank them for participating, and we'd like to thank NDSU for bringing the plow, and the uh, mechanical, electrical, computer, and engineering students who uh, created Frosty the Snowplow, should be incredibly proud of themselves. Uh, and yeah, just their their web interface um, seemed to have worked out enough to, although uh, stalled, was able to clear a large portion of the snow without striking any of the obstacles. Turns out, as they, they lit their shop on fire while creating Frosted Snowplow, uh, it survived the fire and it sure survived its run. So it is... Um, it is a resilient snowplow, to say the least, and we thank the team behind Frosty Snowplow and NDSU once again as we move over to the south side of the field for Wendigo from Dunwoody College of Technology. Home field advantage for Wendigo here, as well as the snowplow and the Washuge. <clears throat> Excuse me. Michelle Buck, your two grandsons are on the team. Congratulations. Very proud. You should be very proud of them. Uh, that is an incredible uh, thing to hear. Good job to them. I'm glad to hear you're proud. I hope uh, I hope the team is proud as well. They've de definitely done a good job. Moving over to the Dunwoody College of Technology, Wendigo. We'll give you some cool little facts, fun facts for the Wendigo coming up here. <clears throat> in a short moment as the field is prepared and the other field is reset. And as I take a sip of my coffee. Alrighty. So, some fun facts about the Wendigo. Much like the Snow Devil, it's a complete redesign and rebuild this year. And it shares the chassis, the same chassis as the Snow Devil and the Washuge. The Wendigo gets his name from Native American folklore. A Wendigo is said to be a humanoid, humanoid man-eating snow monster. 
very fitting given the the robots the the plow's ability to eat through the snow in recent years the team is made up of students from dunwoody's engineering design welding and robotics programs and some of the team's members seem to seem to think pineapple is a pizza topping which uh, of course is not okay hold on a second i have to read this note but i don't agree with this pineapple does belong on pizza and i will i will fight anybody on this verbally of course Pineapple belongs on pizza, folks. It's all good. Um, similar to the snow devil, Wendigo utilizes a magnetic sensor and magnetic strips to track its location along the edges of the snow path. So very similar setup to the uh, snow devil. Now, the snow devil was able to clear a large portion of the snow, but it did run directly in to the uh, obstacles like a linebacker, like Anthony Barr into Aaron Rodgers, um, football reference. Um, so hopefully the Wendigo can use those sensors to maybe avoid the obstacles, uh, but while still completing just as much snow as the Snow Devil, and in fact as much as Frosty the Snowplow, which was able to do it without striking the obstacles. Some photos being taken here of the girls getting ready for their last. Should we go here in a minute? If you heard the higher ups say right there, the Wendigo is getting ready for sounds good. Uh is getting ready for its run. It should be ready in a few short yeah, months. Yeah. But yeah, anybody here from Dunwoody who here supporting the Wendigo and the Snow Devil and the Washuge? Anybody here for Dunwoody? Oh, they're getting ready to go right now. Four, three, two. Let's plow. Let's go, Wendigo. Who's here for the Wendigo? Dunwoody difference. I dig it. Wendigo taking a similar methodical approach as the Snow Devil. Now, what we have to wait and see is, much like the Snow Devil, it's taking a slower pace to clear more snow. But will it strike the obstacle? Will it be able to avoid the obstacle is the question. Up, oh, and it did strike the obstacle, much like the Snow Devil, though it is clearing a large path of snow. One would assume that if it continues to just clear more snow, the penalty will not matter given the points accrued by the amount of snow cleared. The other thing the Snow Devil was able to uh, complete was a very slick turn and return to garage, which the Frosty Snowplow was not able to do. Um, 
So we'll see if the Wendigo. And there's that slick turn. Clean. And it completes it. And I believe it will clear far more snow. That is an excellent run, even given striking the obstacle. is definitely slowed its pace down even further on its return. Will it be able to complete its return to garage after such an impressive clearing of snow? All right, we got, I mean, at the end of the day, an impressive run, even if with the slower pace on the return, an impressive run by the Wendigo. So all you Dunwoody viewers uh, should be celebrating right now for that was a, a, a impressive run, even with the obstacle being knocked down. That turns out that Dunwoody difference made all the difference. Now is a good time for me to eat a piece of banana bread. Because we have a second here. And once again, a few facts about Dunwoody. It was founded in 1914 by Kate and William Dunwoody. It's educated more than 250,000 men and women in its 100-year history. For the academic year of 2020 to 2021, there were... 15, 1,510 students enrolled with 150 faculty members. And Wendigo has made those students and faculty proud as it has returned to garage with a successful run and a lot of snow cleared. I would have to say that the Dunwoody team, the Wendigo team should be incredibly proud of themselves. And agreed, they, congratulations, good job. They did, a, they did an excellent work with the Wendigo. Uh, hopefully, the Washuge can have similar results as its predecessors, the Snow, uh, the Snow Devil, and the Wendigo. But Dunwoody uh, should be nothing more than proud right now, or nothing less than proud right now, because they have completed a successful run of the Wendigo. Oh, and 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 much like. Uh, the snow devil a lot of pizza was consumed uh making the wendigo a lot of pizza i believe the snow devil was 200 pieces i'm sure the wendigo is is comparable if not more because much like uh myself pizza fuels uh the plows to do many things but unlike me that crashes on the couch uh after eating too much pizza the wendigo barrels through snow and is productive now would be a good time to thank our sponsors once again we'd like to thank all of them for making this event possible uh event bags the event bags and stocking caps that you uh see uh maybe on the field right now were provided by sick intelligent sponsors they're sponsored by sick intelligent sensors uh, many of the vehicles in today's competition utilize six sensors. The single eye competition award is sponsored by Toro 
and Boss Snowplows. The Collaborative Competition Award is being sponsored by Delcor Systems. Other sponsors include Air Automation Engineering, Astro Labs, the Institute of Navigation, Banner Engineering, FANUC Robotics, the International Society for Automation, and Western Snowplows. We thank each and every one of you for helping make this event possible. And up next, it seems like we're going to be getting a double feature of Dunwoody uh, snowplows. As as you can see, dun 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 dun. dun. We oh, have God. Dunwoody was shooting on the north field. Dunwoody was shooting on the north field. Sounds good. If you couldn't hear the higher ups, that was uh, them announcing that the Dunwoody was will be competing next. Um, like I said, a double feature of Dunwoody Snow Destroyers. Um, the Washuge, another pizza-fueled uh, creation by the Dunwoody uh, College of Technology, is made up from, stu from students from Dunwoody's Automation, Engineering, Robotics, and Welding programs. It uses a sick LiDAR scanner to map its surroundings, a little different from the Wendigo and the Snow Devil, which use the magnetic strips. They're using one of today's sponsors, SICK LiDAR scanner, to create a map to navigate the snow course. Does that mean they will have a more accurate cut through of the snow um, as compared to the Snow Devil and the Wendigo, which although cleared a lot of snow, um, both struck the obstacle uh, and thus incurring a, a penalty. So with the Washuge using a different type of sensor, could we see a more accurate plow job uh, from this team? And a fun fact, uh, the captain of the Washuge team, Brendan, has been on the team for the last three years. So you can only uh, assume he is incredibly proud of this team, uh, this plow, and uh, all the strides they've made um, in, this co in these competitions. Washuge is a large animal thought to haunt the Pacific Northwest, uh, much like uh, this plow haunts the nightmares of each and every piece of snow uh, in front of it right now. And once again, like the other two, Dunwoody Plows, it is a complete redesign and rebuild for this year, um, fueled by, I'm sure, nothing but caffeinated beverages and slices of delicious pizza preferably with pineapple on it. We're getting some great jobs for the Wendigo. Good support. I appreciate it. Um, but now we got Dunwoody again on the field with Washuge. <clears throat> and we'll of course be getting some scores uh shortly uh, we have yet to receive any scores 
for any of the plows today. If you're just joining us, we've already had Bad Max. We've had uh, Snow Devil. We've had Otto. Uh, I should be listing these schools probably for you. We've had Bad Max from Lake Area Technical College. We've had Snow Devil from Dunwoody College of Technology. We've had Otto by Case Western Reserve University. We've had Snow Problem from Man, uh, Minnesota State Mankato. And last, we just had, uh, we also had Frosty the Snowplow from NDSU. And lastly, we just had Wendigo from Dunwoody. And coming up next, we have the, uh, the third and final Dunwoody Snowplow with Shuge getting ready to take its run, its crack at the top. So far, uh, stellar performances from all the snowplows, a uh, feat of technology that I can't begin to comprehend on how to start and finish creating them. But uh, great performances from everybody. We've seen uh, a couple uh, snowplows uh, hit boundaries. Uh, we've hit, seen many snowplows uh, smash directly into the obstacle, incurring penalties. Oh, I see. The Washuge moving. I believe it's just getting in position. I did not. I'm trying to decipher the words, the uh, the adults from peanut cartoon noises I'm hearing because of the window I'm behind. Um, but I do believe they are getting set up for Washuge's run. But uh, those obstacles have presented quite the challenge. Now, if you clear enough snow, the uh, uh, knocking down of one obstacle becomes, you know, uh, minimal as far as the penalties go. But if uh, Plow was able to clear just as much snow as, say, Frosty the Snow Plow from NDSU or the two previous uh, Dunwoody Plows, uh, without knocking down an obstacle, one would assume that would be a major lead um as far as points go and uh, frost the snowplow did in fact uh comp uh clear a large portion of snow without knocking into the obstacles but there was the path of snow behind the obstacle that let was left untouched um so we can only assume that all the plows going forward are searching for that navigational edge to take up that backfield of snow without striking the obstacle We still got our Dunwoody fans in the chat, Dunwoody fans watching, whether they be faculty, students, or just just supporters, well-wishers. Um, I, of course, mentioned earlier, I also work with Dunwoody, so I obviously have a slight bias towards the Dunwoody plows, but I am incredibly impressed with all the plows that have presented themselves so far today and i can't wait to see more but yeah Shuge in the Northfield. The 
higher ups have deemed it so. The Washuga is on the north field. The Washuga is ready to go. And as the sun clears a little bit more, there's less of a difference between the dark and the light. You'll be able to see a little clearer the path that is taken by these up and coming plows. <clears throat> Some of the remaining plows we have left to go are Lake Area Technical College's Team Torque. Strike the obstacles. No, we want to avoid the obstacles. Although it is funny to watch them strike the obstacles. We have Team Torque coming up soon. We have University of Michigan Dearborn the Yeti. Uh, I believe that are, those are the last two uh, that we have yet to see in this competition. Methodical way to move this. No exactly. Slow and steady wins the race, as the tortoise and the hare taught us. I believe we're ready to go here. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's plow. The Washuge is off to the races. Sounds good. If you heard the higher ups talking right now, they need to do a schematic of the course um, before they go, but their run has officially started. We will see if this different system of navigation as compared to the other two Dunwoody plows uh, will cause it to have a more accurate or inaccurate run of this course. And we'll see if it, you know, Exodia obliterates the obstacle like all the other plows have done. Oh, I see a I see a little bit of a jolt from the Washuge. It's coming to life, like the uh, the fabled animal it's named after. And we're still waiting for it to get its full start. I'm, I'm assuming this is part of the mapping of the schematics or whatever uh, the higher ups told me that it needs to do before it goes. Its run has started, but so far it has yet to crash into the snow. But that is part of this process. We are communicating wirelessly through these snow plows, so you never know when these inputs are going to go through. Oh, and there, like we say, speak of the devil and not the snow devil, though. Washuge is off to the races. It is plowing through the snow. Will it miss the obstacle? It does, in fact, miss the obstacle and will swing in to clear a little bit of snow from that backfield. That backfield we had mentioned earlier that was long sought after. But, oh, no, it strikes the boundary. That will incur a penalty. It missed one penalty to incur another it struck the boundary and is now out of bounds. 
it'll have to return inbounds or they will have to restart. But as I was saying, we're communicating wirelessly. So sometimes inputs don't immediately go through, especially in an area where lots of uh, cell phones are being used. Uh, we're right outside of beautiful downtown Minneapolis. There's a lot of uh, signals coming through uh, all over. So inputs don't always uh, reach the target right off the bat. So sometimes it might take a second for these plows to start. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to get this plow back on the field, whether they will do that manually or through inputs it remains to be seen, but they have incurred an out of bounds penalty for this run. Though after completing a stellar clearing of, excuse me, stellar clearing of snow and avoiding smashing into the obstacles. And you can see on the lower part of the screen or in the middle part of the screen, you can see our next contestant coming up. I am unfamiliar with the looks of the last two um, competitors that we have yet to see, but that could either be Team Torque or Yeti. Um, but we will see which one that is shortly, and we'll get a we'll get a, a brief description. And the Washuge is moving on its own to reset, and I'm assuming to finish out its run without any manual resets, unless I missed something. Um, but we will see the Washuge. We'll see if it does, in fact, finish this run. That... Uh, that sick LIDAR uh, seemed to have come in handy as far as avoiding obstacles. Could it possibly avoid obstacles again to maybe clear out a little bit more of the snow to uh, incur some more points uh, to make up for that uh, penalty for going out of bounds? Oops, Andrew, I agree. Oops. Or ops. Either way, doesn't look good, but it's fine. They did a lot of good. Uh, they should be proud of this plow and how much is cleared. Let's see if they can finish up this run strong. Let's hear it for Dunwoody again, though. Like anybody here supporting Dunwoody, we've had this is their third plow of the day. And each one of them have done incredibly well. And I can only imagine that the Dunwoody school, the students, and the teams are all incredibly proud of these plows. All good, Andrew. I got, I got what you're saying. I got what you're saying. You're all good. Nice, Andrew. Big Dunwoody fan. Were you a student or you know someone who goes here? Faculty? Or just a well-wisher. All right, Washuge cool. 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 Well, is restarting from the other end. It's going to lurch forward a little bit to try to clear out the rest of the snow while avoiding that obstacle. That is going to be key here. They've already incurred one penalty. They cannot afford to incur another one with such a great run on their hands. It is moving forward ever so methodically. And it looks like it's mapped it out. It looks like it's seeing that obstacle. Can it avoid it? It looks like it's going to. It's coming back. 
it seems Oh, maybe the wind shifting the obstacle back and forth is causing it to get a little confused. I don't know if you can tell by the video, but the wind is actually pushing the obstacle back and forth uh, like a wacky, waving, inflatable, arm flailing tube man. And could that be causing some issues with the uh, with its uh, navigational programming? Though it does look that like that sick LiDAR scanner is working its magic because the Washuke has avoided that inner track obstacle and looks to complete its run heading back to garage. Nice Andrew, current student, right on. That's awesome. Washuge from Jack, agreed. Doing a great job kind of picking up the pieces from that penalty and returning to garage in style without hitting the obstacle. I believe from all the plows that I've hit, who have not hit the obstacle, which is very few, this may have beaten uh, NDSU's Frosty, the snow plow, as far as total uh, snow removed. So congratulations to the Washuge team. I'm not a joke. They're all applauding. Let's all applaud. And if you're at your house right now, applaud. Sounds good. Everyone applaud so that the world can hear you. The Washuge has completed its run with a great clearing, uh, an out-of-bounds penalty, but a great return, too. So we'll see. The Washuge definitely showing its strengths, uh, being able to maneuver around the obstacles. I agree, Doug. That was a very good run. Congratulations to the Team Washuge. Congratulations to Dunwoody for an excellent plow. All three Dunwoody plows on their solo runs have done very well uh two colliding with the obstacles but clearing a lot of snow um and with Shuge, of course uh an excellent run not colliding with any of the obstacles but incurring a, sm a slight um out of bounds penalty jennifer i agree go with Shuge. good good job with Shuge. Great recovery. I agree, Angela. Great recovery. Came in. Not only did it clear more snow out, but it once again avoided the obstacle instead of slamming into it like so many plows have done before, including the previous two Dunwoody plows. That is something that has become very unique today, and Washuge's team should be incredibly proud for getting around that obstacle even after incurring the penalty. So as they de de uh, debrief the Washuge, uh, uh, let's go. Dun, 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 da, ba, da, ba, ba. And we have a new challenger has entered the battle. Um, I am trying to get a word at, on which plow this is, but one would assume it is either the Yeti from University of Michigan Dearborn or Lake Area Technical College's second plow, the Team Torque. So let me consult with the higher-ups and figure out which team is up next. Um, thank you, Adam, for the, the kind words. I appreciate it. Yes, the stream's going good so far. The plows have been very exciting. Uh, and looking at the jackets, I can now see that that is, in fact, Lake Area Technical College and their team, Torque, getting ready to plow up next. Um, Lake Area's last 
uh, Lake Area opened the show today with Bad Max. Um, Bad Max was able to clear a large chunk of the snow, but I believe struck one of the obstacles. It's been a few hours. I can't really remember. But uh, still an impressive showing from Bad Max. Uh, we could only hope Team Torque does uh, just as good, if not better, um, as they start to reset the field from the on the north side where Wishuge was performing. We will get Team Torque coming up here, uh, in, and I'm, I would assume in a matter of moments. Adam, yes, unfortunately, you did miss the NDSU plow. I um, am not sure. They might come back, but uh, NDSU, one of the better, I would say, uh, runs of the day, um, they were able to clear a uh, the frosty, the snow plow, as it's called, was able to clear a large portion of the snow and not strike any of the obstacles or go out of bounds. Um, it did not return to garage but it did clear a large portion of snow. So you can only assume that it incurred a large amount of points. And they had plenty of fans here cheering them on as it occurred, including the grandmother of two of the team members uh, who was uh, incredibly proud of her grandson's accomplishments. Here, Adam, just for uh, just cut, since you were inquiring, I'll ask to see if the NDSU plow will be coming back uh, later. Yeah, to answer your question, Adam, the NDSU plow will be coming back for the collaborative events, which will be happening uh, somewhere in the afternoon, a little bit after maybe like 1.30ish. Um, we'll be getting into the collaborative events, and NDSU's Frosty the Snowplow will be uh, participating in those events. So right now we are waiting for Team Torque from Lake Area Technical College to go for its run. Uh, five students are on the team, Torque team, um, from uh, LATC's robotics and electronics majors. Team Torque gets its name from the large amount of torque produced by the robot's large DC motors. More than 250 feet pounds of torque produced. Um, torque was built upon the 2020 platform LATC brought to the competition in 2020 redesigned and rebuilt the internal electronics in only two weeks, 
a very short amount of time to rebuild all of it, but they got it done. The entire vehicle needed to be rewired on Wednesday after the team blew their controller. So they faced some adversity with Team Torque, but they seemed to have successfully um, gotten it back to the starting line, even with that hurl. This great team spent all their free time working on this robot, and they should be proud regardless of the results of what they've accomplished. And we should get the start here very shortly. I am doing commentary all day. Uh, I think Team Torque is getting set. All of you LATC people, get ready for it. One, let's plow. Team Torque is off to the races, clearing a lot of snow. Can it avoid the obstacle? Ah, oh, and like a linebacker to a quarterback, it slams into the obstacle. But it's clear. I did. A lot of snow plowed, but slamming into the obstacles, but a successful return to garage. I believe. Are they going to reset or are they going to call that a run? That will dent your Kia. If you slam one of these plows slamming into that, that'll sure dent a Kia. One of my friends just texted me and said, this is like Midwest battle bots. That is an incredibly accurate comparison. Anybody here fans of Lake Area Technical College and Team Torque or Bad Max, either one of the teams? Are they doing a reset? So if you heard the powers that be right there, Team Torque will in fact be doing a restart to try to clear a little bit more snow after striking the obstacle. Now hopefully while they clear this other section of the snow, they don't veer off from course too much and hit the outer uh, obstacle of the course because that would incur another penalty. Oh, and Team Torque has started once again. They're clearing some more of that snow. They're moving forward, moving forward. And, hey, you already struck the obstacle anyways. Might as well hit it again. 
the old zombie land double tap on the obstacle but clearing more snow as it goes and i believe that might wrap up team torx run for the single competitions they seem to have great control over the acceleration um and that will wrap up Team Torque. I believe I heard the announcer say that is it for Team Torque. I don't know how much more they can clear given that all the snow has collected on top of the obstacle. I see a judge coming out getting ready to score and the judge has entered the field so i am going to assume their run has finished but we shall see maybe i'll radio in to the powers that be and see what the deal is And that will complete Team Torque's run. Uh, successful clearing of snow, but striking the obstacle not once, but the double tap for twice. Uh, but a very successful run nonetheless as far as the clearing and as far as time goes. Uh, the, the plow moved incredibly quickly, much faster than, the, than all of the Dunwoody snow plows, um, and was able to clear more snow than its predecessor, Bad Max, earlier this morning. But... Well, the ju judges tally their scores, and we reset the field on the north side. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. We have a new competitor entering the battle with University of Michigan Dearborn's Yeti. University of the history of the University of Michigan Dearborn began in the mid 1950s with studies conducted by Ford Motor Company director of training Archie Pearson. These studies concluded that the company was facing a future shortage of college edu educated, qualified engineers and junior administrators. So I assume the college was uh, incredibly, it, it was it prioritized the creation of those students. Michigan Dearborn has competed in each of the 12 years of the autonomous snowplow competition. So quite a legacy for this school with this competition. A snow filtering system was added to this year after snowfall during the 2020 competition caused the LIDAR, caused LIDAR noise. A good idea and a great adaption made by the University of uh, Michigan Dearborn. I believe I was here for that competition. And yeah, it was snowing. Uh, it was snowing and it was very windy, which created many problems for many of the of the plows. The lead programmer was unable to travel due to COVID protocols, but has been video conferencing with the team as they prepare to compete. Students majors include electrical, robotics, and design engineering, as well as computer sciences. The Yeti is getting ready for its run. This will be the final plow in our singles competition before we take a quick break, uh, reset, and get ready for the collaborative competitions. Do we have anybody from University of Michigan Dearborn or uh, friends, family, well wishers in the chat at all?
<clears throat> this being the last uh, single uh, competitor run, uh, it's probably a good time to uh, reaffirm the purpose of this competition. The purpose of the autonomous snowplow competition is to challenge university, college and college students, as well as the general public to design, build and operate a fully autonomous snowplow to remove snow from a designated path. Excuse me, one quick second. Apologies for that. The teams will be scored based upon the amount of snow removed, the amount of time taken to compete, complete the course, Alex, 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 and their Alex, ability Alex. to avoid the obstacles. Apologies for the, the, the background noise. Teams from the upper Midwest and Canada have competed in this event since 2011. Uh, we got some Dearborn fans here cheering on your cheering on uh, the, the Yeti. That'll be awesome. This will be our last single competitor before we take a short break from about 11 30 to 1 30 um to reset grab some food and come on back for the uh co co collaborative competitions um but we are very excited for university of deer uh, michigan dearborn and the yeti to be competing here very shortly Just got word from the powers that be that once Dearborn, I see we have another fan for Dearborn here. I uh, hope you're all excited for their run. Um, after Dearborn is finished, we will be taking a break uh, from 11.30 to 1. At 1 o'clock, we will resume with the collaborative competitions.
Do we have Dearborn students here or just fa friends, family, well-wishers, faculty possibly? We definitely have a dynasty here as Dearborn has in fact competed in every one of the 12 years of the autonomous snowplow competition. All right, we got someone's mom, we got Joe's mom right on. Friends and family, dig it, right on, sweet. Thank you for the support for Dearborn. It's always exciting seeing who's who's here supporting their teams. A oh, friend of family, not friends and family, friend of family. Joe's mom's awesome. See, Joe, Joe's mom, you even got a fan in the chat. Not only does Joe have fans here, Joe's mom has fans here. Fan of Joe and his mom. Good. Yeah, of course. Of course. Absolutely. So we're still waiting for the Yeti to get loaded onto the field. I can only assume they're doing some last minute preparations of the, uh, of the Yeti. You know, uh, maybe perhaps tuning that new uh, uh, snow filtering system that they added after last, uh, after the 2020 competitions. Um, increased wind and snowfall caused the LIDAR system to uh, like create LIDAR noise, which uh, made it hard to navigate. So one would assume maybe they're, uh, oh, they're, cut, they're opening the boundaries to let the Yeti in. Um, one might assume that it's possibly too heavy for the ramps, but uh, we're not going to uh, weight shame here for the Yeti. It looks like a very uh, sturdy and strongly built snowplow. North Mark, Michigan on the North Coast. Yep. As you heard the powers that be, we are going to have the Yeti competing here. North Coast, North Coast. We can tell the teams to start eating as well. Yeah, we can tell. 
as you can see, we are making lots of preparations here. Hence the uh, the the multitude of background noise from our walkie talkies. But nevertheless, we are excited because the University of Michigan Dearborn Yeti has taken the field and is getting ready to complete its run. Michigan's gonna start. Michigan's gonna start. And Michigan is Michigan is about to start. And Michigan is gonna start. All right, let's get some hype for Michigan for the Yeti. Three, two, one, let's plow. And speed is the name of the game with the Yeti. It is plowing through quickly. Will it avoid the obstacle though? Ooh, it did bump into the obstacle, but it was able to stop. Now, will that count against them? We're not 100% sure, but an excellent start as far as speed and accuracy goes from the Yeti. I hear giggles from the outside. I'm assuming maybe it's fine, but who knows? Excellent start from the Yeti, but I'm assuming they are going to want a restart. Oh, I believe they're saying that's that's going to complete the run from the Yeti. An excellent clearing of snow, a slight strike of the obstacle, on, and I believe that's uh, well. Let me let me just double check here. All right, folks, that will complete Yeti's single run. Uh, we will be taking a short break from 11.30 to 1, uh, where we will, you know, get the field reset. Uh, our, our very uh, uh, respectable and uh, I'm sure proud competitors will get a, a good lunch break in, celebrate their runs, and then we'll be back at 1 o'clock for the collaborative competitions where we will see four uh, competitions with pairs uh, between the different schools and different plows. Um, you'll get to see all the plows once more. And uh, yeah, it'll be an excellent time. Uh, congratulations to the Yeti for a great clearing of snow at a great speed. <clears throat> One would assume at the speed it cleared the snow, definitely going to earn some major points remains to be seen whether or not uh the striking of the obstacle will be the uh, uh will be added um or if that was considered the snow being pushed into the obstacle uh granted it did not uh obliterate the obstacle like past plows have done but we will find out scores later on today but for now uh we are going to take a short intermission uh, and we will be back with you around 1 o'clock. So remember, everybody, come back around 1 o'clock to see all your favorite snowplows coming back for the collaborative competition. You'll see the Yeti, Frosty the Plowman. You'll see Otto. You'll see Snow Problem, Team Torque, Bad Max, Washuge, Windigo, and Snow Devil. You'll see all your favorites back again in a few hours just at 1 o'clock. Go Yeti, I agree. They did great. Thank you uh, for the compliment on the coverage. And we will see you all here, right back here at 1 o'clock.
Welcome back, everybody. We are here getting set up for the collaborative competitions for the autonomous snowplow competitions. There will be a slight uh, variation on the track. Rather than a 1 meter by 10 meter track, two teams will be competing on a 3 by 10 track um, with all the same um, rules and penalties that were applied in the last set of competitions. Um, the purpose of the autonomous snowplow competition is to challenge university co and college students, as well as the general public, to design, build, and operate a fully autonomous snowplow to remove snow from a designated path. Teams will be scored based upon the amount of snow removed, the amount of time taken to complete the course, and the ability to avoid obstacles. Teams from the upper Midwest and Canada have competed in this event since 2011, and we've seen teams here that have competed uh, for multiple years of this competition. Uh, teams like uh, University of Michigan Dearborn have competed in all 12 of the events uh, of the autonomous snowplow competition. So we will take this down. And yes, as you can see, we have people out on the field. There is our uh, template for the new field tip. Go for it. And the powers that be have just clued me in that at about 1.15, Yes, sir. All right, folks. Uh, the powers that be have made it so that at about one fifteen, we will have the team of both of our Lake Area Technical College teams, that would be Bad Max and Team Torque, will be competing in the collaborative competition. So if you uh, want to clue in all your Lake Area Technical College friends, family, and well-wishers that they will be coming up in a matter of a few minutes, like I'll say 15, less than 15 minutes, you should uh, probably hit them up right now to join in on the live stream. Lake Area Technical has uh, had a mixed bag of, of uh, clearings. Bad Max cleared a good chunk of the snow, but was not able to return to garage and veered off course slightly, but still making a good attempt. Uh, Team Torque was able to very, very quickly take down a large chunk of snow, uh, but did collide with the obstacles uh, in front of them uh, and would eventually settle with the amount they got. Um, but still, both both plows showing impressive clearing um, techniques. Uh, they, um, yeah, they both did a very good job at what uh, their first runs. We'll see how they cooperate in the collaborative efforts. Uh, if anybody from the Lake Area Technical College fan base is in the chat, feel free to. Show your love and support for the LATC teams. Couple facts about our uh, LATC uh, snowplows. Given that we've, uh, it's been a minute since we've seen uh, at least Bad Max. Because Bad Max kicked off the 2022 competition. He, they were our first plow in um, this morning. Bad Max is a brand new design from the ground up that was built in only three weeks. 
uh, quite the accomplishment as far as time is concerned. Uh, uh, also, an accomplishment was not burning down their entire garage because the fire department was called twice during the building of Bad Max. Uh, the team consists of a welder, a machinist, an engineer, a programmer, and an electrician. And if you uh, did not catch the reference, Bad Max, of course, a reference to the Mad Max film series. Uh, I believe that is why it is, uh, has a, a very shiny and chrome outer look. Um, hopefully... Uh, allowing us to witness them as they clear as much snow as possible, which leads us to their partner in crime for this run, which would be Team Torque. Team Torque has five students on the team from LATC's robotics and electronics majors. Team Torque gets its name from the large amount of torque produced by the robot large DC motors, which is about 240 pounds, 50 pounds of torque produced. I can hear the announcer starting to announce a little bit about the teams that are competing. Torque was built upon the 2020 platform LATC brought to the competition in 2020. Um, it was redesigned and rebuilt in about two weeks. So another very quick uh, redesign and rebuild compared to uh, the three weeks it took for Bad Max. Um, the entire vehicle needed to be rewired. Uh, this was crazy. The entire vehicle needed to be rewired on Wednesday after the team blew their controller. So they have uh, dealt with a bit of adversity with uh, Team Torque, but Team Torque was actually able to have a more impressive run, some might say, than Bad Max. So even with all those adversities, they still managed to uh, be quite successful in the single eye competitions. Um, and the team has enjoyed spending their free time uh, and making sure that this uh, plow is as good as possible. The uh, established in 1965 in Watertown, South Dakota, 2,600 plus students attended uh, LATC in 30 different programs. They have a 99% placement rate and the Robotics and Electronics Program was the recipient of the ATEA Outstanding Program of the Year Award. So a quality school for a quality plow, set of plow teams. And I'm sure they're all incredibly proud of their snow plows and how far they've gotten with them. And I'm sure they will be incredibly proud after the collaborative competition. And I'm, we're wishing them all the best luck. Once again, if you're just joining us, we are starting the collaborative competitions. We have gone through the single eye competitions with all the plows. In this, there will be about four uh uh runs with teams um latc of course teaming together because they are two from the same school um and they will be clearing a three by ten track rather than the one by ten track uh from the single eye competitions so if anyone here in the chat is an latc uh friend family or well wisher why don't you give them some some hype, some beliefs, some spirit energy, whatever you want to call it in the chat. And we'll start setting up the field. And we're looking at about a 115, you know, between 115, 120 start time for the LATC collaborative competition runs. Sounds good.
as we start to assemble the field, uh, one of the questions that probably is going to come up is how will two plows handle the obstacles in their path? As we remember from the singles competition, the obstacles presented a major challenge to almost every plow that encountered them, most of them barreling through them and uh, like just knocking them down. Um, so with two plows taking up, you know, a, a bunch of space, even though the track is wider, will the plows have any issues ramming into the obstacles or indeed maybe ramming into each other trying to avoid them? It'll be very interesting to see how two plows interact with the obstacles and the boundaries. I would say around 75% of the plows from the single eye competition either clipped or decimated the obstacle. So we are dealing with a very tumultuous situation here. The LA uh, TC people are, uh, are waving to us, so we had to give them a wave back. Um, but yeah, so we'll see how they can handle uh, the obstacles with two plows on the field. They can see me. This is weird. <clears throat> the viewers are starting to climb up. Anybody here? An LATC fan, faculties, students, friends, family, well wishers, pen pals. Uh, co workers, D and D, a Dungeons and Dragons oh, campaign friends. Oh, we got people talking. The other question we probably might have is uh, how will the declining temperature, because I believe we've hit our today's high temperature. It's only downhill from here. Oh, no. We're, well, yeah, we're, we're going to start declining. Um, how will that affect the communication to the snowplows? And also, will the incoming snow that's planned for the evening hit any earlier and possibly cause any issues. We already spoke about how the Yeti, I believe, or was it the, uh, it was the Yeti, uh, the University of Michigan Dearborn's Yeti had issues in 2020 uh, because of the amount of wind and snow causing LIDAR noise. Uh, hopefully the snow will remain at bay until the competition is finished, but uh, we can never predict these things. The weather is, uh, weather's just wacky it's just wacky everyone's so who knows my phone says 4 p.m i don't trust it we'll see what happens but hopefully it stays off long enough for all of our competitive competitions to make it through so no one has a weather disadvantage
anybody listening to the audio, uh, what what uh, what teams are you representing? We got any uh, Dunwoody folks here? We got any uh, Dearborn folks here? We've already talked about LATC quite a bit. Hopefully, they got some supporters in the chat. We've got some Dunwoody folks. Any Dunwoody folks back here after our after our brief intermission? How about Snow Problem? I know I saw there was a lot of Snow Problem folks. Minnesota State Mankato, the Snow Problem uh, contingent. NDSU, right on. I just texted my friend from NDSU. Said, "Hey." You better get on the live stream because you got your your plow is about to come up and uh, not too not too much longer. He missed the single eye competition and he was mad. <clears throat> How about Case Western? Anybody here from Case Western representing the auto? So it looks like the field is almost set. Probably looking closer. Yeti, we got some Yeti fans here right on. The Yeti will be back shortly. Not 100% sure about the order, but we know right now we have LATC's two plows gearing up for their com collaborative run. And the field is almost set for them to do so. And by LATC, of course, I mean Lake Area Technical College's Bad Max and Team Torque. Bad Max, of course, was the opener of the 2022 competition and made an impressive showing, as well as Team Torque, maybe even uh, overshadowing Bad Max just ever so slightly. But both teams put in a great effort and seemingly had a few hurdles on their way to get here. Bad Max's team having the fire department called on them twice during the build and Team Torque uh, needing to rewire their whole plow Wednesday, a mere three, four days ago when their controller blew. Um, but even through all that, they were able to get here and they are absolutely crushing it and we are ready for them to do their collaborative effort. Lindani, we have Jazz and Ducky watching live from Colorado, all the way from Colorado. Go Dunwoody, they say. You know what? I can't help but agree, Lindani. Hopefully, you and Jazz are having an excellent time watching the competition.
just got Amanda, this is the two lake area teams. The two lake area Just heard from the powers that be that they are just finalizing the uh, track. This is the first time they've had to do the three by 10 for a minute. So they just want to make sure everything is completely accurate. So we will be getting started very, very shortly for the two Lake Area teams. That would be Bad Max and Team Torque. Team Torque is just fun to say, I think. Team Torque. Lindani Johnson, when you say Jazz and Ducky, you wouldn't have to be talking about Jazz, who is one of the teachers here at Dunwoody, would you? Be pretty crazy if you were. Sorry for the delay, folks. There will be a slight adjustment to the course just to make sure it is equal for everyone involved. So it'll be just a few more minutes before we get started. Before we get started, since we've come back, I have yet to thank our amazing, beautiful, just spectacular sponsors. So let's do that right now, shall we? You'll see event bags and hats that are being worn by the competitors. Those were all sponsored by SICK Intelligent Sensors. Many of the vehicles today in the competition are using SICK Sensors. I believe the University of uh, Michigan Dearborn was one of the main ones that used it. It seemed to work very well for them. I apologize, that wasn't the Yeti. That was, actually I believe that was a with Shuge. Um, it was indeed. Um, and the single eye competition award is sponsored by Toro and Boss Snowplows. 
the collaborative competition, which you are viewing right now, is being sponsored by Delcor Systems. Other sponsors include Air Automation Engineering, Astro Labs, the Institute of Navigation, Banner Engineering, FANUC Robotics, the International Society for Automation, and Western Snowplows. We thank all of you so very much. Without you, an event like this does not happen. And while we're uh, giving out thank yous, we'd like to thank all, all, all of our crews, our workers, uh, everyone participating in making these events happen. These uh, these kind folks have been out here in the cold all day, uh, earlier than all of us got here, uh, helping build these tracks, form these uh, areas. Uh, it's been cold, and uh, we only hope that they are rewarded with a, a nice warm place to sit some hot hands uh and uh just overall some comfort when we really appreciate all their work so thank you once again to all of our workers our crew our uh, volunteers uh judges you know you are all amazing humans and we appreciate it because this kind of event only happens when we all come together for it and a big shout out to all of the schools that have that are participating that includes the home Field advantage having Dunwoody College of Technology. That includes Lake Area Technical College, who you see their team on the field right now. That's Minnesota State Mankato. Thank you so much. Case Western Reverse Reserve University. We appreciate you coming out from Ohio to come to this event. North Dakota State University, absolutely. And University of Michigan Dearborn. Thank you so much for participating in this event, coming out to our our state, our city, uh, to Dunwoody College um, and participating. And you all should be incredibly proud of the uh, effort and the results of all your teams. I see they're shifting um, the sides for the obstacles. And they will uh, rebuild just a bit here. Apologies once again for the delay. But we will get started very shortly here, hopefully within the next couple of minutes. Um, our viewer count is starting to grow a little bit more. Hopefully we got some uh, Lake Area fans, friends, um, uh, book club buddies, um, you know supporters uh, all here watching the LA TC folks in both Team Torque and Bad Max uh, getting ready for their collaborative competition run. We will be with that shortly. Also, I just like LATC because they gave me a nice little wave a couple minutes ago. So you know what? I hope they do great. I already hope they did great, but they gave me a nice little wave. So now we're all friends. I'm officially sanctioning us friends. So I hope they do great. I just heard a woo from our outdoor MC, so hopefully that woo is a woo of uh, of success that we are. Uh, our event is about to kick off once again. I am getting a little fearful of the clouds coming in, and hopefully my prediction will not be accurate in that the snow will get here earlier than expected. Um, we're hoping for that snow to stay off. 
long enough for everybody to get their shots in on the collaborative competition because as we discussed with some of the plows uh, in 2020 had issues navigating with all the wind and snow flying everywhere uh, causing LIDAR noise. So we are hoping that that snow stays off so we can uh, have a good fair competition without any weather uh, effects on the different plows, especially if a couple of plows, a couple of teams get through without any issues and then the rest have to deal with heavy snowfall. We're not sure about the amount of snow right now, but we just know that snow is predicted within the next couple of hours. And Minnesota snow, as any of you know that live in the state, is vengeful. It does not like us. All right. They seem to be sliding the starting point up a little bit. Oh, I see Team Torque moving. I see Bad Max moving. That means they're going to start getting prepped for their runs. I enjoy Bad Max uh, aesthetic. Fury Road is one of my favorite movies. I saw it four times in theaters. So hopefully... Bad Max can live up to its namesake and uh, enter the gates of Valhalla as the War Boys wished to do in Mad Max Fury Road. Mark, Mark, we're getting ready to go. Right on. If you heard the powers that be, they're getting ready to go. So we should be starting in relative time relatively short time i would say probably before 140 one would hope was that for me or for alex All right, folks, Bad Max and Team Torque have both entered the arena, the Thunderdome, as it would be for Bad Max, and they are ready, getting ready for their run. Our viewership is going up. I'm going to keep asking it because I, I have to know because I got to ask for everybody. Now that the viewership is going up, do we have any Lake Area Technical College fans in the chat right now getting ready for Team Torque and Bad Max's runs? We see Team Torque an inching closer. They're getting ready. Both these plows have come a long way to get to this competition, jumping over hurdles, but with relatively short time being fully created, rewired, wired, built in the span of three or less weeks, three weeks for Bad Max, two weeks for Team Torque, and then rewiring for for uh, Team Torque I, I, with a few days. They blew their controller Wednesday and still managed to get here and, and, and perform quite well in the single eye competition. So we will see these two Lake Area Technical College plows start their collaborative run within the next couple of minutes and we are wishing them nothing but the best of luck 
in their collaborative efforts. If you're just joining this, this is if you're just joining us, I apologize. This is the 2022 autonomous snowplow competition coming to you live from Dunwoody College of Technology in beautiful downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota. So far today, we've seen the entire single eye competitions where we've seen uh, all of the plows execute a solo run of the courses a one by 10 rather than the three by 10 you see on your screen currently. And they were all stellar performances, though most of the plows had issues with navigating the obstacle. There is one place on the inside of the track and one place on the outside of the track to ensure that one maneuvering around the inner track to not strike it and two the outer to uh, uh, avoid hitting it on your return to the garage, the starting point. Now, with that obstacle being a problem, seeing two plows navigate the the, uh, the track was going to be interesting because now you are competing with another machine in your way uh, as you try and navigate around the obstacles. So we are going to have to wait and see if uh, these plows once again just decimate the uh, the obstacles or if they will, in fact, uh, navigate around it with hopefully relative ease. We see one of the judges communicating with the LATC team. Not sure what's being said, but I'm sure all very informative and just explaining the rules as far as how the collaborative efforts go down. The judge has now left the area and we will see what is going to happen. Oh, I'm hearing the announcer say things. I am unsure as to what he's saying because everything behind this window sounds like the adult from the Peanuts cartoon talking. But I am sure he's informing everyone that LATC is about to commence its collaborative efforts. All right, I see them taking their spots at the front of the line. More announcements being made. Unsure what they are, but I will ask after the plows get started. I see the powers that be possibly reaching for their walkie talkie. So I am going to possibly mute myself. We shall see. Yes, he is. The powers that be have informed me LATC shall be starting in mere moments, actual moments. The judge, another a safety worker is talking to the team. The announcer seems ready to announce it. 
It's crazy, folks. We're almost there. It's going to be amazing. It seems like the LATC folks are lined up and they're ready to go. Team Torque, Bad Max, Lake Area Technical College, the collaborative competition, the first collaborative competition of the 2022 Autonomous Snowplow Competition. And a judge walked back on the field. Let's see what they are planning here. I see thumbs up from the powers that be, the powers that be being EJ Daigle, who uh, is helping organize a lot of the aspects of this. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the collaboration. We have to have access to safety people to monitor. So I think we are ready to go. Sounds good. If you didn't hear that, the powers that be, EJ just said that they required a couple more safety personnel for the duo the collaborative competition. Now that that safety personnel is here, we should be ready to go. Four, three, two, one, let's plow. Lake Area Technical College and Bad Max is off to the races. Getting a good amount in. Team Torque is behind, but explodes out of the gate. Now, we're hoping they do not collide with each other. That is going to be one of the major factors of the collaborative competition. Regardless of where they're navigating, we do not want them to collide into each other. Um, I am unsure if there is a penalty like when you collide with the obstacles. So far, Bad Max has avoided the obstacles, as has Team Torque, but it is reversing. Let's see if it strikes the – it does not strike the outer obstacle. But will Team Torque go for more? Or will Bad Ma is Bad Max going to strike the, strike the outer obstacle? It does not either. But now we are facing a situation. Are they going to continue? I believe they did not. I believe they did not hit the out of bounds, but I could be wrong. Sorry, I think you better heads up. Oh, you're totally fine. Are they resetting or did they get an out of bounds or? All right. Uh, all right. I used my talking on the live stream voice while talking to EJ, uh, the powers that be. Uh, Lake Area Technical College is going to take a restart and continue forth. Now, I believe they can restart from anywhere as long as they haven't hit the out-of-bounds mark, which means they can start from exactly where they are. The only issue is going to be making sure that the two plows do not collide and are able to get out of the area they are in without striking that outer obstacle or hitting the inner obstacle on the track while maneuvering away. Let's see if Bad Max can get out of the way of Team Torque and they can both clear uh, a, a larger portion of the snow. Up oh, and Team Torque seems to be going first, easily maneuvering around Bad Max and getting into a restart position. Okay, all right. It seems like both are getting a good 
I'm out of time to reposition a little bit, hopefully without hitting out of bounds and incurring the out of bounds penalty, which has plagued a, a couple of the plows on today. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly which ones, but I recall one of our one of the plows uh, incurred uh, a, a fair few out of bounds penalties. Um, uh, so those can definitely add up while maneuvering. And of course, again, having a second plow in the mix uh, creates less space for these uh, plows to maneuver around in the given area. But it does look like Bad Max and Team Torque are lining up just fine without any penalties being incurred. Now, they will incur a penalty for the restart, but uh, there will be no extra penalties given uh, obstacles or boundaries. Team Torque has now gone forward. I'm unsure as to whether or not that was correct or if they had to wait. But we will find out shortly. Once again, we'll be getting point scores a little bit later. We have yet to receive any of the official point scores for the single eye competition. But as far as the collaboratives go, we will get them as they come as well. Given that Bad Max did kick off the morning's competitions, uh, we would probably get Bad Max's first, uh, and possibly we would get it after the collaborative, given both of its competitions would be concluded. Team Tor Hi, All right. The powers that be have notified me that they are going to go retrieve the next set of teams, but that the LATC teams, that is the Lake Area Technical College teams of Team Torque and Bad Max, are resetting once again to take another crack mm -hmm. at this course. Now, whether or not they have incurred any penalties from the jump start by Team Torque is, uh, is a mystery to me, but we will see... Uh, once we receive the point totals. But it does seem like Bad Max and Team Torque are prepared to launch. We will see if they are ready. It seems like... It seems like they're close. I see some thumbs up. Up oh, there goes Bad Max. It is it is going. I'm assuming this is their restart commencing. Bad Max moves towards now again. It is barreling towards the obstacle. One hopes that it will be able to maneuver around it, like so many of the pals have not been able to. And we see it. Nope, crashes harder than Bitcoin right into the obstacle. And that will incur another penalty, although it did manage to take a lot of the snow with it as it moved forward. And Bad Max has returned to its initial start position. Whether Team Torque will get another shot or not remains to be seen. But as you can tell from the other side of the field, the north end is being prepared for the next set of teams. I am still unsure as to who those teams are going to be. But they will be approaching the field shortly and hopefully with the added time between the finish of the LATC pairing, we will get a very uh, expedited uh, start to the next set of plows. I believe there are three more sets of teams coming up. So that would include plows like Snow Problem from Minnesota State Mankato. That would include Otto 
from Case Western Reserve University. Uh, that would include Frosty the Snowplow from NDSU, North Dakota State University. That would include Yeti from University of Michigan, Dearborn. And that would include the three Dunwoody Plows. That would be the Washuge, the Wendigo, and the Snow Devil. All of these uh, plows have done very well. I'm interested to see how each of them cooperate with each other. Of course, the oh, and I see it now. I see dun 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 dun. dun, dun, dun. I see that the NDSU's Frosty the Snowplow is approaching the field. So one only needs to guess now who Frosty the Snowplow will be paired with uh, for their uh, collaborative competition run. And hopefully any NDSU fans uh, are in the chat and are preparing to see their team take the field for the collaborative portion of the competition. Now we're going to move back over to the LATC portion, though, as it seems like they are resetting. Uh, they're taking another reset. Um, one would assume that they want to get a couple more points on the board, but they will incur a penalty for the reset. But we'll see if both plows go or uh, they will go one at a time. Like it's seemed to have occurred the last couple of resets. Let's plow the lake area. Technical college team is moving forward with a reset. And it does look with the trajectory in mind that Bad Max is going to hit that large mound of snow while steering very clear of the obstacle that has fallen to the side. This should hopefully allow the LATC team to garner some more points uh, after incurring a few penalties. And it looks like Bad Max has stopped on the mound. Will it be able to push forward any more? I'm unsure. And Team Torque seems to have not left the starting gates. Will it leave? We are that remains to be seen. Again, we talk about the communication wirelessly between the controllers uh, inputting with the plows. Uh, a lot of the times, especially in these uh, cold conditions, especially in these areas with high uh, uh, cell phone signal activity, sometimes we get uh, uh, a lag in the inputs um, simply because of this, uh, the communication being overtaken um, by frequencies. Go Frosty. Frosty's coming up, uh, coming up next. Glad to have you back. And glad to see that Bad Max did not collide with its LATC partner, Team Torque. But it does seem like Team Torque has not moved since its reset. So we will have to wait and see whether or not it continues for another move or if they will call it on the LATC front. I see Team Torque moving a little bit. It's backing up. Up, oh, it it's it's kind of shaking. Uh, 
All right, folks, we are still waiting on a total result for the Lake Area Technical College uh, pairing, but we now can confirm that NDSU's, uh, uh, that would be North Dakota State University's uh, Frosty the Plow, the Snowplow, will be teaming up with Case Western Reserve University's Otto from Ohio. Um, so that will be the pairing, Otto with Frosty the Snowplow. So that will be set up on the north side of the field, and we will uh, direct you to that once they have started taking the field. But it does look like, in fact, the LATC pairing of Bad Max and Team Torque has concluded their run. With a fairly sizable portion of the field cleared, uh, one obstacle taken out, and a couple of restarts. So we'll see what those points look like uh, as the competition uh, carries on. They will now measure the amounts and uh, tally the scores. So we will move it on over to the north side of the field where Frosty the Snowplow will soon be paired up with Otto. All the NDSU fans in the live chat, your plow is outside and ready to go. We are just waiting on Otto to follow as well. So can we get a big cheer for the, the Case Western teams and the NDSU teams? While we wait and we see the NDSU Frosty the Snowplow uh, enter the arena, as it were, let's uh, take one more look at the purpose of this event since we're setting up for a new set of 
competitors in the com competitive, uh, the collaborative competition. The purpose of the autonomous snowplow competition is to challenge university and college students, as well as the general public, to design, build, and operate a fully autonomous snowplow to remove snow from a de designated path. Teams will be scored based on the amount of snow removed, the amount of time taken to complete the course, and their ability to avoid obstacles. Teams from the upper Midwest and Canada have competed in this event since 2011. That is a long time that we've been doing this, and every year I'm sure has been fantastic. So it looks like we are still waiting on the arrival of the Case Western Auto uh, to the field, but NDSU's uh, Frosty the Snowplow has taken the field and is in starting position. And there is Otto coming from the back, um, ready and able and ready to get started. I believe they are, seems to be moving just fine. Hopefully there's been no issues. Um, a couple pieces of fun facts, if you, if you missed out on them before about these different plows, Frosty the Snowplow, uh, has the nickname High Flex, uh, representing the High Flex learning used during the recent COVID spikes. Um, the team is made up of a mechanical, electrical, and computer engineering students. Uh, the team accidentally lit their shop on fire while they built the... <laughs> Frosty the snowplow, but luckily Frosty did not melt. In fact, it was forged by that fire and went on to be one of uh, the standout uh, contestants of the single eye competition. Frosty uses a unique uh, articulated steering system and an articulated plow blade to take care of uh, its snow business. And it uses a web interface for status and control. Uh, and it seemed to have no issues cutting through the snow with ease during the single eye competition. The auto uh, from Case Western from Ohio uh, navigates using a combination of LIDAR, cameras, and DecaWave systems. Um, uh, it spends its summer uh, as an autonomous pasture management robot for a research project called Greener Pastures. This version of auto actually is a combination of two former snow plows uh, the former uh, Snow Joke, um, using the, the chassis from Snow Joke, and the sensor package of the previous version of Auto, creating a hybrid machine built to destroy snow uh, everywhere. And since arriving in Minnesota, the team who created Auto has. Oh, 
my apologies. The team has destroyed a three-pound bag of gummy sharks. Um, so the fuel of the auto seems to definitely be gummy, uh, gummy sharks. I believe they're getting ready to start any moment here. The uh, the uh, Case Westerns auto and NDSU's Frosty the Snowplow. Can we get a, a couple uh, cheers for NDSU and Case Western from its fans? I know we have a couple here. And hopefully these two uh, very unique and different snowplows uh, can avoid a bison turf war and not collide uh, together while uh, performing the collaborative competition. Uh, Lake Area Tech was able not to uh, collide with each other as far as I could see, um, but that always is going to be a uh, concern when working in a confined space with two fairly large um, pieces of machinery while also trying to avoid the obstacle presented, which uh, as we saw with the Lake Area uh, collaborative competition, they were not able to avoid the uh, the uh, obstacle. But granted, very few plows have been able to avoid the obstacle. So that is not a um, a, uh, a negative aspect or a, uh, a demerit of the uh, snow plows. That is something that all of the plows today, well, I would say the vast majority of them have dealt with that very same issue. And now you're dealing with it, although with a a bigger track we're working with a three by ten rather than a one by ten um you are working with still like i said earlier uh, another piece of machinery um competing for space with you so hopefully these two teams um hopefully they have been able to work out some sort of a collaborative plan that benefits both of them and they're able to get the job done with relative ease i see a judge coming out of the building so i can uh, if, you, if you could hear the powers that be, he says we're getting close. Sounds good. Getting close means getting close. So hopefully we will be launching very quickly the NDSU and Case Western teams. Go team. Go. Go Frosty. Go. We appreciate all the love and support in the comment section. I believe I heard the announcer. Three, three, two, one. Let's plow. And Otto starts out plowing through the middle. Let's see how far it makes it before Frosty the snowplow goes in as well to take its part. Otto seems to have cleared a large portion. Here comes the turn. And you can see the... Case Western team is jumping for joy as Otto has successfully plowed and is making a slick turn. Not all unlike uh, of, uh, the great innovation of zero turn luggage suitcases in an oh, airport. Running, running the middle, and other ones around the outside with the extra would be acceptable. Well. I didn't understand most of that. And Otto is returning to garage, and this team is jumping for joy. Congratulations, Otto, for a slick turn, smooth like butter, and a return to the garage with little to no issues. Handshakes and claps all around. Now let's see if Frosty the Snowplow can bring it on home as the anchor of this team and clear that remaining group of snow that's been piled up by Auto from Case Western. If you are fans of these two snowplows, you've got to be happy with that start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Three, two, one, let's plow. Frosty, the snowplow, you are allowed to go. And once again, we're dealing with communication between the controls, inputs, and the plow itself. Let's see if the NDSU team can get Frosty going and clear the rest of those mounds of snow. Clear off the snow, Frost. I agree. Last time we said we needed a, a top hat, a corn cob pipe, uh, some pieces of charcoal, a button nose, um, and a carrot to get frost and 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 just a lot of coffee. Now let's see if uh, that coffee hasn't worn off yet, and Frosty can come to life, sing some songs, and clear off the rest of the snow. And we are still waiting for Frosty to get out. Get the coffee. Just dump it all over it. Get the coffee. Just dump it right, right, in, the, right in the engine. We got this. It'll wake up. Everyone's clapping to get the get Frosty snowplow to move. They're waiting. They're, they're trying all the secret code words. Open sesame. Password one. What secret phrase will cause Frosty the Snowplow to move forward? Oh, there he goes. He's come to life. He's singing. He's dancing. Frosty's moving through the snow, and he is halted. Hopefully, he can get a little bit further. To clear off a little more of the edges, it is returning to garage. Will that be it, or will it move forward and complete the run? Everyone's waiting with bated breath. Is Rossi old enough to have a little Bailey? A little Bailey's could, <laughs> I don't know if that would kick him up or make him go back to sleep. I'm sure Frosty is oh technically I think Frosty's only a couple weeks old, technically. But we'll see. We'll see if uh we can get Frosty to kick off a little bit more snow or if this is the uh the end of the line for Frosty the snowplow. Seems as though the judges are waiting to see if Frosty kicks a little bit more, got a little bit more fight in him before officially calling it for the Frosty, the NDSU team. Not without uh, uh, positive uh, results. Uh, Frosty did. Oh, done. And that is it for Frosty the Snowplow. Not without positive results. A large portion of snow cleared. They're calling it a run. They're calling it a run. Calling it a run. Congratulations to the Otto and Frosty the Snowplow teams. A large portion of snow cleared and no obstacles struck. Uh, Otto was able to clear off a vast majority of the snow, make a slick turn back into the garage while frosty was able to come in as the anchor and clear just a bit more of that snow out of the way to make it a very um at least the first half of the course fairly clear if that was a driveway uh you could get a couple a car or two uh up that driveway for sure so congratulations to the ndsu frosty the snowplow and case western auto teams Absolutely good going. They uh, definitely deserve all the praise, and they should all be absolutely proud of themselves for as far as they've gotten. 
Uh, Frost is a snowplow with a stellar performance in the single eye competition, of course. And Otto, uh, I would say, uh, one upping its performance from the single eye in the collaborative competition, uh, eliminating the the I would say the majority of the track. So they will now measure out and calculate calculate points. Congratulations once again to Case Western NDSU, well deserved. Uh, and we will start setting up for the next set of teams, which have yet to be announced to even me. Good performance, I agree. I agree. Good performance from both plows. Right on. Not sure who the next two participants are going to be in the collaborative competition, but I do know we will be heading back to the South Field, which is currently under preparation for the next run of plows. And we will find out the names of the two schools, the two uh, uh, snowplow teams that will be competing very shortly. Um, uh, the plows we have left, we have all three of the Dunwoody uh, plows. We still have... Um, and that would be uh, Washuge, Windigo, and Snow Devil. We still have the University of Michigan Dearborn's Yeti. And we still have Snow Problem from Minnesota State Mankato. So one would assume Dunwoody, uh, the two two of the Dunwoody. Nope. Snow Devil and Windigo come to the field. Well, you heard it here. You heard it here for her, folks. You can hear my walkie talkie. Wendigo and Snow Devil from Dunwoody College of Technology, the home field team will be out next. Dunwoody's Wendigo and Snow Devil are out next. Now, those two plows use a similar uh, technology for their navigation. One would assume that'll uh, that could probably help them in navigating uh, all of this. Um, all of these, uh, the track and the obstacles. Um, neither were able to avoid the obstacle, though, in the single eye competitions in either of their runs. The only Dunwoody plow to avoid obstacles was, in fact, the Washuge, uh, which uses a different form of navigation. Is that the main factor contributing? One could make that assumption. So, with the two Dunwoody plows that did hit the obstacles teaming up, will they be able to? Uh, avoid colliding into the obstacles or in fact each other in the collaborative competitions uh, only time will tell as we are still waiting for those two plows to uh, make their way out onto the field oh and never mind i do see i do see the wendigo making its way downtown walking face fast faces past and it's homebound um so it is coming out, and fairly soon, I would only assume the Snow Devil will be right behind it. Making my way downtown, walking fast, faces past, I'm home bound. This is his new theme song. Wendigo coming in with confidence, flying through the parking lot here at Dunwoody College of Technology, based out of beautiful downtown Minneapolis. Uh, we've had a very uh, calm day weather-wise. The early morning uh, runs were a little bit windy, but overall uneventful weather-wise, besides you know the uh, blistering cold uh, that uh, plagues our fair state uh, for 
a large amount of the year. Um, and so far, we have seen no fingers or hair break off. So hopefully that continues. And hopefully the snow uh, decides to postpone and not come in too early uh, while these uh, plows are doing their runs. As we saw in the 2020 performance, I was just speaking to uh, one of the uh, volunteers here because we had both been at the 2020 performance. It was the coldest and windiest uh, snowplow competition, I believe, ever. And many of the snowplows actually malfunctioned and had issues navigating because of the wind, the snowfall, and the cold. It just happened to be such a, a negative factor on navigation. So if we could have the snow uh, just uh, chill out and uh, stay back for a little bit longer, that would be much appreciated, especially given I believe we only have uh, two performances after this, two runs after this. I believe it would be uh, Washuge, um, Yeti, uh, Snow Problem, and I think that might – is that it? Yeah, I don't, there, maybe there's not a – Am I missing something here? Hmm. Well, we'll see. We have only uh, a few uh, runs left of the competition today, so let's have that snow stay away uh, and come again some other day, uh, or at least some other hour, like maybe at night when I'm home in my nice warm bed, not outside. Granted, I can't complain. I've been inside this entire competition. So let's talk about the real heroes of the competition. Everyone outside working right now because they are freezing and we appreciate them. They've put in so much hard work to make sure this event happens. And uh, one could never fault them at all. They uh, thank you so much to all the volunteers, all the snow crew, all the uh, judges, everyone coordinating this to make this event possible. You guys absolutely crushed it and we appreciate all your efforts and we hope you are re rewarded with a nice warm night uh to relax after spending so much time outside in the cold and ladies and gentlemen it is cold i went outside with a coffee in my hand and my pinkies froze and went completely numb within like a minute it's it's not fun outside When they said the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful, the frightful part was talking about Minnesota winters. It is terrifying how cold it is sometimes. And now that I can stop rambling because the snow devil is making its way to the starting position to join up with its fellow Dunwoody snowplow, the Wendigo, and we will see their collaborative efforts coming up soon. Andrew, the up next we have, I should type this in the chat, but we have the Dunwoody team of Snow Devil and Wendigo. Got it. As you heard from the powers that be, we are setting up the Dunwoody team of Snow Devil and Wendigo. Will both of them be able to avoid the obstacles unlike their single eye competition and also avoid colliding into each other? Um, that is going to be the big question entering this run. Thank you. 
couple fun facts here about the Dunwoody team. So let's go with the fact that uh, all three of the Dunwoody plows are complete redesigns for this year, and they all share the same chassis. Um, the Snow Devil uh, was a team made up from the Dunwoody robotics and welding programs, uh, and it utilizes, much like the Wendy, when, uh, much like the Wendigo, I apologize, um, magnetic sensors and magnetic strips to track its location along the edge of the snow path, and the turns are triggered by reverse polarity magnetic strips. Um, all the Dunwoody plows have executed pitch perfect turns back to the garage. That has uh, not been an issue whatsoever with the Dunwoody snow plows. Uh, like I previously said, the issue with these two on the Dunwoody team in particular has been colliding with obstacles. So hopefully, they can avoid the obstacle as well as each other. The Wendigo uh, is made up of students from the engineering, design, welding, and robotics programs. Um, similar to the Snow Devil, it uses those magnetic strips as well. Um, around 200 slices of pizza were consumed uh, when building uh, the Dunwoody uh, contingent of snow plows. Um, and in my notes here, it says some of the team members seem to think pineapple is a pizza topping, which, of course, it is not. I refuse to accept that statement. Pineapple is a pizza topping. Uh, I completely disagree. Pineapple on pizza is delicious, uh, and I will die on that hill. Go Dunwoody, says Jasmine Darden. Jasmine Darden, thank you so much for supporting Dunwoody. I believe you are the same jazz all the way in Colorado with Lindani. And also maybe perhaps the jazz who teaches 3D printing at Dunwoody. So we have some faculty represented in the chat. Just a heads up, Jazz, I heard someone was looking to look at the 3D printing lab. You might have some new students in the upcoming semester. All right, the obstacles have been set. The track is looking nice and uniform, and they are loading the two Dunwoody snowplows onto the battlefield. Anybody else here rooting for Dunwoody? Anybody else here excited for the Wendigo and the Snow Devil? Both have shown 
amazing prowess at clearing snow, but both have also shown amazing ramming speed when it collides with obstacles. Seeing a little bit of trash talk towards the U of M, the University of Minnesota. It's all good. It's friendly competition. But yes, unfortunately, the reigning – that's probably – okay, that's why I couldn't – okay, anyways. Uh, the reigning champs of the snowplow competition, the University of Minnesota, were not able to attend today due to COVID protocols. So whoever wins this year, that's setting up for a mighty big rematch next year uh, as the reigning champs, I'm sure, would love – to get a shot at whoever wins today. Um, of course, uh, best of luck and well wishes to the entire University of Minnesota team as they deal with the COVID protocols. But University of Michigan is uh, is definitely brought out a very uh, quality snowplow in the Yeti. But you're rooting for Dumbly, though? I appreciate it. I appreciate it so much. I, I have a slight bias towards Dunwoody, but uh, I am very impressed with all the snowplows in today's competitions. They've all done an amazing job, and they should all be very proud of themselves. All right, we got both Dunwoody snowplows in the arena, ready to go, just about. I'm not sure whether that's Wendigo or Snow Devil. That requires a little bit more of a positioning. Hard to tell when the same chassis are used for all three Dunwoody snowplows. It's hard to tell them apart without seeing the name. But uh, both, obviously, Dunwoody, uh, Maroon, Robots, raring to go to hit this collaborative uh, run for the 2022 Autonomous Snowplow Challenge competition. Oh, right on. We got a Dunwoody grad who is from Detroit. Right on. I've been to the UFM run many times. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. My family, they're uh, University of Michigan, I believe, Grand, Rap or the Grand Rapids. So uh, I've been to Michigan many times for them, uh, to visit them. So definitely understand the rooting for the U of M uh, Dearborn team. Oh, you're an employee here at Dummy. Right on. Sweet. <laughs> Well, we are still seeing the Dunwoody team get in, getting into position. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that is the position they're choosing to start with, with uh, a one after the other approach. Not all unlike, uh, not unlike uh, a regular snowplow convoy would do uh, on the streets here in uh, Minnesota, one after the other, just slightly shifted. 
to try to clear as much snow as possible without uh, creating excess. So we'll see if this is the for the formation they're gonna go with. Um, but yeah, excited to see the Wendigo and Snow Devil launch. Actually, this is a probably a smart strategy on their part, given the fact that both of these uh, plows were unable to avoid the obstacle. This makes sure that they will for sure avoid each other, hopefully, um, when it comes to the run. But now it seems one of them is being pulled back a little bit. I'm wondering if that is cool. I'm sure it is. You're rooting for Dunwoody, but Washuge is the best well. Washuge did really good. Not going to lie, uh, my guy. That, uh, that that uh, avoided the obstacles. It um, it was able to execute the same slick, smooth as butter turn as the rest of the Dunwoody plows. Sounds good. Oh, this is Washuge. Oh, in the south field. Oh, this is Washuge. Oh, I've been mistaken this entire time. I guess. So it's Washuge and uh, Wendigo. My apologies. Still, regardless, uh, both Dunwoody snowplows. Um, actually, that makes a little bit more sense because Washuke was able to navigate a lot better than Wendigo. And so, Andrew, you get to see Washuge regardless because it is up in the Dunwoody team. Apologies for the confusion. But it is the Wendigo and the Washuge, which bodes well for the Dunwoody team, as the Washuge, by my estimation, had the cleanest run of the single eye competition with its navigation of the obstacle and the clearing of the snow. So that combined with the Wendigo should make for a lot of clearing of snow and hopefully uh, an ability to avoid colliding with each other or um, the obstacles presented. So we got a couple people rooting for Washuge. Cool, right on. I was very impressed. Dunwoody in general, I'm obviously a little biased for, so I'm rooting for them as much, but I'm rooting for the other teams as well. And they're getting prepared. They're getting ready to launch here. All right, while they get set up, I believe now is no better time. There is no better time than to talk about our lovely, beautiful, magical, splendiferous sponsors. We'd like to thank our sponsors for helping make this event possible. The event bags and caps you see uh, people wearing were sponsored by Sick Intelligent Sensors. A couple of the, uh, the clouds today were using Sick Sensors. The single eye competition was sponsored by Toro and boss snowplows 
This collaborative competition uh, portion of the event is sponsored by Delcor Systems. Other sponsors include Air Automation Engineering, Astro Labs, the Institute of Navigation, Banner Engineering, FANUC Robotics, the International Society for Automation, and Western Snowplows. Thank you so very much. This does not happen without you, and we appreciate all your contributions to this event. This seems like a smart idea for the two plow setup, though I will say the uh, previous two teams, uh, like such as the NDSU Frosty the Snowplow and the uh, Auto, were avoid, able to avoid a bison turf war in uh, colliding with each other by going one at a time. This assuredly would allow both teams to move at a much faster pace. Without I think we should be going here in about one minute. Sounds good without colliding into each other. They're about to count down here. Three, two, one, let's plow. Go team Dunwoody, Wendigo and Washuge. The plows, uh, the dumbway plows, once again, taking their far more methodical uh, approach, uh, allowing for hopefully a more accurate clearing of the snow. I can't tell if that's Washuge or Wendigo starting us out, but uh, doing a great job of clearing the snow. And I'm starting to see the uh, other Dunwoody plow uh, starts to inch closer to the starting line. There's the turn, but will the arm clip the opposite? And it does. The Wendigo arm clips the obstacle. And that makes it two for two in its runs in hitting the obstacles. But if this team can clear enough snow from the field, it will not, hopefully should not matter as much. So let's finish strong here, Dunwoody, with Washuge and Wendigo. Washuge is entering the field, uh, but again, smooth as butter turns from these Dunwoody bots. Um, I see on the other side of the field, I won't pan to it right now, I do see the Yeti from University of Michigan Dearborn coming up to the field. Um, so we will reach that run after this. I believe they are being paired up with is that one of the is that the snow devil i i would assume we'll find out in a short amount of time Sheesh indeed, Kate and Adam. Sheesh indeed. Oh, and we see Wendigo taking another turn, getting ready to plow some more. They want they want to plow even further, garnering even more points. Sheesh. It seems like the front uh, plow is extending into the further 
snowbanks to try to get some more points for the team as the back uh plow cleans up a little bit behind and you know i am not too sure if this is the washuge or the snow devil because there i believe there is another dunwoody plow on the opposite end of the field and i think it says washuge on there so we will either be watching the snow devil and wendigo finish up their run or the Wendigo and the Washuge, followed by possibly the Snow Devil uh, in the next run. We will find that out shortly. Perhaps by the time the front uh, plow turns, we will be able to see its nameplate and determine which of the three Dunwoody snow plows it is. Inside sources, uh, thank you, Andrew, for reporting. Inside sources are saying Washuge is up next. So I was misinformed. I was correct earlier. It is Snow Devil and Wendigo. Washuge will be teaming up with the Yeti from University of Michigan, Dearborn. Apologies for the confusion. Either way, we are watching the two Dunwoody plows, the two other Dunwoody plows, uh, expertly clear this track. Uh, whether they'll be able to return to garage is the question because they are both moving at a far slower pace. Um, will the judges allow for them to turn? Do they have enough space to return all the way to the garage? But you cannot um, discredit the amount of snow they have cleared through this run, even with the striking of the obstacle. They are done. That is the Dunwoody run. What a great performance. Yeah, the run. Sounds good. And that was the snow. Jerry Klein, I recently broke a lot of bones. I'm like, that sucks. Gravedigger, that's the wrong sport. Gravedigger is uh is monster trucks. Jerry, you're in the wrong chat, unfortunately. We are this is the autonomous snowplow competition, not monster truck. So yes, I was correct initially. That was the Snow Devil and the Wendigo competing. And we will move on to the uh, Minnesota State Mankato, not the University of Michigan, uh, but the Minnesota State Mankato, uh, the snow problem, along with Dunwoody's own, Dunwoody's own Washuge. Um, that will be the next contest up. But congratulations to the two the two other Dunwoody snowplows for a successful run um, in the collaborative competition. We'll see their uh, points be scored here while they start to set up the north side of the field.
So up next, we have Minnesota State Mankato Snow no problem. I spent quite a while talking about the Washuge earlier, given that the Dunwoody team was participating again. But let's put a little shine a little bit of light on Snow no problem from Minnesota State Mankato. Snow no problem was a mechanical engineering senior design project. It uses GPS data for its navigation. The estimated total cost to build this vehicle was three thousand dollars, and it competed in the virtual competition last year in 2021. This is its first in-person competition, and Snow Pro Snow Problem will be collaborating with Dunwoody's Washuge for the Triple I competition. So, when we last saw Snow Problem, it had a little bit of a problem staying in the boundaries. Hopefully, that problem has been sorted out, and there's no issues. Do you know if the double I is a collaborative score? You know what? That is a great question, Andrew. I will ask the powers that be and get right back to you. While we wait for that information, let's briefly talk about Minnesota State University Mankato, previous, previously known as Mankato State, was established in 1858 and currently serves more than 15,000 students. Notable alumni include Minnesota Governor Tim Walls and the Minnesota Vikings' very own Adam Thielen. Quite a uh, roster of alumni from that school. Hopefully... Uh, the snow problem can stay as elusive as Adam Thielen as, and as successful as current gover governor Tim, Tim Walls. I do enjoy the names of all these uh, these snowplows, especially I'm partial to the cryptid kind of uh, base names, such as the Wendigo or the Washugi, Washuge. Um, but a lot of these are very funny. Mad Max, of course, I love Mad Max. So that's a that's a fun name for me. Um, the Yeti, of course, always fun. Frosty the Snowplow, Auto. All these names are very very clever and fun, and uh, yeah, gold star for the for the names of these snowplows.
So, Andrew, to answer your question. So, Andrew, to answer your question, the teams are scored together for the collaborative competition uh, as one total score. And Brad, what are the dimensions of the snowfield? They are three meters by 10 meters for the collaborative, one meter by 10 meter for the single eye competition. Uh, a couple pieces of news. One, uh, Minnesota State Mankato's no problem will compete with uh, University of Michigan's uh, Dearborn's uh, Yeti um, due to the fact that uh, University of Minnesota could not make the competition due to COVID protocols and they were short a partner. So you will get to see two runs from Snow Problem as a team with Dunwoody's Washuge and uh, University of Michigan Dearborn's Yeti. Um, as well, uh, after that, we will start presenting awards so right now there's this run and then one more run after this, and then we will start presenting awards and we will forward the awards on to you. You know, I'm not 100% sure about the traction uh, comparatively with concrete versus asphalt. Um, I was wondering about traction myself given the cold weather, whether it was going to be um, icy, whether that salt build up, um, what other factors are going to be included with traction as far as the plows go. But so far, it doesn't seem like any of the plows have faced any sort of traction issues, um, mainly just navigation uh, and communication between the uh, the inputs from the terminal to the plow itself. Um, but traction so far has not presented any issues regardless of the material they are driving on. All right, we're still warming up here for the snow problem and Washuge run in the collaborative efforts. Uh, I believe they're still forming the obstacles and counting the points from Dunwoody's previous run on the south side of the field. But we will get word shortly on when this comp, this next run will start. Uh, snow problem. And Washuge are still both on the outside of the arena waiting to enter the battle. Um, just for a, a show, uh, we have about 33 people watching right now. The, the, the total is kind of climbing. Who here is looking for Mankato, Mankato's own uh, snow problem? And who here is rooting for the Washuge from uh, Dunwoody? Anybody have any cheers they want to send out to those teams? Let's go, Washuge. Some loyal Washuge fans in the chat. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. They'll they'll appreciate it too when they read the comments back on the video and they say you guys are cheering for them. They appreciate it.
and the Rams have been put up for the plows to enter the arena. Nice job, Mankato. Right on. We're looking forward to Mankato taking the collaborative run. And, of course, the Washuge to improve on its already fairly good single eye run. Which one is with the one with the flashing light eyes? That would be uh, Snow Problem from Minnesota State Mankato. I I like the flashing the flashing lights. Actually, they have a lot of lights. That thing it's actually pretty sick on the inside. I think it has like a big purple light strip on the inside. All right, so no problem has entered the arena. Washuge is getting ready to enter as well. Now, the one thing that uh, Snow Problem did showcase in the single line competition that was pretty impressive was its speed. It came in all cylinders firing to eliminate the snow let's go snow problem right on right on we got some more snow problem fans here all right team mankato state is surveying the inside of snow problem hopefully there's no problems uh on the inner workings of the plow and washuge is lining up getting ready to start off if you're just joining us welcome we are in the last couple runs of the 2022 autonomous snow plow competition hosted live at dunwoody college of technology from downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's been a cold but eventful, enjoyable Man, day. Yep. Somebody was shooting on the North Field. Yep. Yep. That was the powers that be letting us know that they're getting ready. Dunwoody's with Shuge and Minnesota State Mankato's snow problem ready to go. I believe we are almost ready to go here. I'm hearing the announcer call out some names. But yeah, it's been a fun day so far. The single eye competitions were uh, incredibly enjoyable. And we are now almost wrapping up with the collaborative competitions. We have one more run after this featuring University of Michigan Dearborn's Yeti as well as uh, Minnesota State Mankato's Snow Problem will return for a second run. Um, and we, and then that will wrap up the collaborative section and we will then move on to awards, which we will relay all to you. No problem for Snow Problem, agreed, agreed. What's the temp out there? I believe, yep, about 10 degrees. I agree, Brad, that is correct. Um, so far, we haven't seen too many problems, unless maybe the mechanics are working a bit slower because of the cold. Um, 
uh, who knows how the weather is affecting them. We have luckily not had too much uh, extreme weather issues such as snow or wind. Uh, the 2020 competition was marred with weather issues because of how much wind was kicking up the snow, making it hard to place the tracks in general, but also causing LIDAR noise with a lot of the snow plows. Um, so a lot of the plow, a couple of the plows, um, namely, I believe, if I am not mistaken, yes, the uh, the Yeti from Dearborn uh, created a new snow filter to reduce light, uh, to re reduce snow noise in case in the eventual eventuality that uh, snow would be kicked up by wind. But luckily, we've had a fairly tame day. Ten degrees is pretty warm this time of year for Northern Illinois. You know what? That's probably true. I don't think I've ever ventured to Northern Illinois, but I'm sure it gets very cold there, Jerry. But so far, no weather issues uh, for this event. It's saying there's snow planned for 4 p.m. around 4 p.m. Um, but uh, hopefully that stays with 4 p.m. and we can, uh, or later, and we can wrap up our runs before the snow starts falling, causing any sort of unfairness with weather effects. 10 degrees is a Minnesota heat wave. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think it was about negative 16 a couple days ago. It is a, it's pretty, it's pretty rough. We all know how it feels. It's, it's just unbearably cold. Surprise people are in shorts. <laughs> There it seems like you've got a nice heat system in your house. My basement is freezing all the time, especially nowadays. You have to wear a bunch of layers in my basement. So we are once again waiting for the start of Minnesota State Mankato Snow Problem and Dunwoody College of Technologies Washuge for the second to last uh snow run of the collaborative competition uh, we also see that the other side of the field the southern side of the field is being built for the final run which will feature university of michigan dearborn's yeti along with the aforementioned uh minnesota state mankato snow problem snow problem getting in its runs today a lot We see the judges surveying the situation. I hear, I think you were here getting ready. Here we go. Oh, there we are open to snow problem. One second. 
You getting ready for the countdown? Five, four, three, two, one. Let's plow. Got it. Hmm. We did the countdown, but so. There we go. There goes Snow Problem firing out of the gates. Will it avoid the obstacle? It avoids the obstacle, but will it avoid the boundary? It does not avoid the boundary. That was a problem from last in the single eye competition. Uh, it struck the boundary numerous times. Hopefully this time around it can get out without striking it more. But unfortunately, Snow Problem did strike the boundary. That will incur a penalty. Um, and I'm assuming they'll also restart, which should incur another, hopefully, oh, well, hopefully they won't have to incur another penalty. Hopefully they can back out of it. But the Washu Gate has left the gates and is carving its way through the snow. Let's see if it can hit one of these trademark slick turns of the Dunwoody snow plows. And it does, will it avoid the obstacle? Let's see it go. And oof, it knows exactly what it is doing. The Washuge crushing it. But can it return to the garage is the question. Or have they stopped it intentionally? Just in case you blinked and you missed it, we had no problem coming out with ramming speed, but unfortunately ending up barreling straight into the boundaries, incurring a penalty, and we had Washuge come out and clear off the snow and then turn, and we are now waiting to see how they wrap up this portion. Will they return to garage or will they call it? Let's take a, let's uh, shoot a message over to the powers that be and see what they have to say. All right, they're discussing whether they want to take a restart or if they want to keep moving forward. I'm assuming if they take the restart, they incur the pe another penalty, and they're wondering if they have enough points uh, between the two of them to move forward. Give this a B plus. It was pretty good, Jerry. It was pretty good. Hey, that's pretty good. B plus out of Z. Oh, Jerry. Mm. Sounds good. If you hear that, folks, uh, we are going to be seeing a restart from this collaborative team. So hopefully more points accrued, less penalties doled out. 
I believe if the Washuge can return to garage while clearing some snow out and snow problem can get back without hitting the boundaries, it should be a sizable chunk of points for this team. So no problem has a problem with boundaries. Hey now. He's trying his best. They're going to investigate the inside of Snow Problem a little bit. Hopefully get it set up for the best results possible. And then hit the restart. All right. All right. Snow Problem is maneuvering fine out of the pocket. Hopefully that should allow it to not strike the boundaries as it re-enters the fray. But it looks like they're going to try to restart from starting position, which could be a good idea if they're able to stop it from colliding with the boundaries again when it restarts. All right, I believe both these teams will be starting from the starting line once again. I do see the Yeti from University of Mich Michigan Dearborn uh, getting ready for its run, uh, which it will be joined by Snow Problem uh, after shortly after its this restart run right now. No problem has a problem with snow problems. Clever. Clever, Jerry. No problem. Still doing a little bit of tinkering here to make sure that they can uh, do a successful restart. But we will see what their plan is going forward. As we're seeing them uh, prepare for another run, one can only wonder if the amount of time taking for Snow Problem to get back on will negatively affect it going forward in the second run they have to do. Uh, in the event snow starts to fall uh, for the final run of the evening, um, though we can say that the Yeti has come prepared for snowfall. Uh, the Yeti was negatively affected by snow noise, uh, uh, LIDAR noise from the snow in the 2020 competition. So it came prepared. It came prepared for snowfall. So hopefully snow problem can also adapt to that as well. Um, as well as keeping itself within the boundaries uh, on its second run. This is epic, Tim. I agree. This is epic. Up oh, and there goes Snow Problem out of the gates once again, clearing very well. Will it continue to go forward? 
or will it return to garage? Seems to be going back. Hopefully not into Washuge, and it's hit the boundaries. My God is my witness. It has broken the boundaries in half, but did not hit Washuge. Definitely will be some penalties there, but not harming its partner in this collaborative competition. We'll, we'll see. Okay. I believe I see some of the uh, Snow Problem team saying we're wrapping this one up. Let's see if the Washuge will take another run at it before they completely call this run off. All right, it looks like the teams from the different plows are getting together on the south end of the field to pose for a picture. I do not know if this means that the run for the Washuge and the snow problem is over, but we will consult with the powers that be and figure that out for you folks. All right, that is the end of the run for Washuge and Snow Problem. Uh, they will end on that note, and we will go for one final run after they take this picture with all the teams together with their snow plows, and then we will conclude the finals, and then we will announce all of our winners. Who do you guys think won today? That's a very good question, Jerry. Um, as far as the single eye go, I would say that the NDSU, um, Frosty the Snowplow, and the uh, – forgetting all these names because the Wushu, um uh, were both very good in the single competitions. Um, they cleared the most without knocking over any of the obstacles. That's just my 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 humble opinion. Um, as far as the collaborative goes, uh, although they did knock over obstacles, Dunwoody's uh, run seemed to be uh, take up the most amount of snow. Now we have a lot of awards here. It's not just a uh, total points or total uh, 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 collaborative points. There's many awards for um, clearing of the snow, amount of time, avoiding obstacles. So there's plenty of, of room for different awards. For different people next year you should get a mic down the field i agree i honestly uh i would like to see a mic downfield and also a camera down there as well um uh personally if i um if they are nice enough to ask me back to do this again i would like to see uh i would definitely help in making it uh, a multi-cam situation because i think there's a lot of cool details that might be could be missed from this angle and there's a lot of cool chatter i'd like to hear um 
But yeah, so that, that I think I completely agree, Andrew. All right, the teams are preparing to take a picture. And once that picture is taken, hopefully the final run will be ready to go. And then we will get to the awards. I will say though, all these plows showed something very cool. You know, Snow Problem was incredibly quick. Um, the Dunwoody robots. Do you want to be in the photo? Sure, why not? I'm gonna go take yeah, a. Just, uh, just uh, do a little milk for those guys. And let them know you'll be back in uh, ten minutes. Sounds good. I'm gonna go take this picture with them. I'll be back in like ten minutes.
And I am back, folks. Sorry if I sound winded. I ran all the way back here. <clears throat> we have one final run. Minnesota State Mankato and University of Michigan Dearborn. And then we will head to the awards. Thank you guys for the, the kind words, and uh, I appreciate I appreciate it. This was a very fun stream. So remember, we got one more run up, and then we will go to awards. Right on. Well, we are almost done 
creating the stage for the final run. This has been a eventful autonomous snowplow competition. And uh, I, I believe I said it a lot of times, but it bears repeating. All of these teams should be incredibly proud of the work and results, the work they put in and the results they've gained. And uh, I'm very excited to see who wins what awards. And we will bring all of that to you. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to do the award ceremony outside or inside. What is announcers? Um, but we will uh, we will get those results to you as soon as we start to hear them. And it does look like snow is starting to fall. Hopefully this final run can get started before uh, it picks up too hard and we can uh, wrap this one up without any negative weather effects and then get straight to the awards.
Yeah, we, uh, we're we still finishing up the creation of the final run, but uh, hopefully within mere moments, we will get to the final run. Um, but we are inching further and further into that territory, though the snow is starting to come down, so hopefully we... Get more like Minnesota. Agreed, Tim. More like Minnesota. Uh, hopefully, we can keep it off for a little bit longer, and then we can uh, get this final run going. We still have our uh, our Yeti fans in the chat. I think I saw a couple of you earlier on. Thank you for sticking in if you're still here to cheer on uh, University of Michigan Dearborn's Yeti. And then all of our uh, Minnesota State Mankato fans, you'll get to see another round of Snow Problem teaming up with, uh, with uh, Yeti. And this, of course, is because uh, University of Minnesota was unable to attend due to COVID protocols. But uh, we were able to work this out so they could uh, have a partner instead of having to do it solo. Washugi is taking Snow Problem's place. Our inside source, uh, Andrew, has, is saying we might have a switch up for our, our final run. Uh, and I think you might be right there because I do see a Dunwoody snowplow on the field. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, good. Good. Washugi is going to be the Iron Man in this competition. We'll be taking a another round of the competition. We got to go, Yeti, go. Well, go, Yeti, go. I agree. That's hoping the, for the best for them in this final run. We now actually will be having not Snow Problem and Yeti, but Washugi, Washuge and Yeti. All right, I see Yeti entering the field. Have to make it tall enough for that snowman on top of the snowplow, which I didn't notice when they first went. That's cool. <laughs> May not have a secret inside source. That's definitely not related to Washuge. Uh, there you go. Well, you can't you can't leak your sources, Andrew. That's the biggest. Uh, that's the biggest uh, issue with journalism. You have to make sure you keep your sources secret. Or being a journalist. So we have one final run getting ready here to go. Seems like we're getting pretty close to start time. And then after that, we will go to the award section. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, it looks like the snow plows are starting to line up. And once they do, we will get started with our final run of the evening. And afterwards, we will be announcing all the award winners. Is that Yeti closest to the snow? Uh, the Yeti is closest to the snow. And then the Washuge is uh, off to the side. The light gray one, correct, correct. The one with the snowman on top. Oh, you probably can't see that. The light gray one, yeah, that is correct. And then the, uh, the Washuge is, is behind it. And I believe we are getting ready to go here. one final run Just about ready here. We got our judges. We got our. Oh, the Yeti has to map out the skim, the the area. That's what. Uh, if you see the man in the uh, the blue coat, uh, they are mapping out the area so that the Yeti can use its different methods to map out the session. The easy area out there. The, But I am sure we are about to get a very good performance from these two. Oh, no, 